Return it. I didn't know he was in a wheelchair. I told you the trampoline was on sale. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody, to the KQ Show episode Ocho, instructional guide for your listening pleasure. For those new to the show, hi, I'm Kyle. I'm just like everyone else. I wake up, brush my skeleton, then start my day. As a young lad, I had what my parents would aggressively call the gift of gab. By the third orphanage, I had really honed my skills. I love conversations, and I love to laugh. I'll be chatting with business owners, comedians, glass-eye repair people, and the inside of a fake leg. Today's episode brings us talking with The Rock. I get to spend a few hours with 10-year UPS driver and former Dwayne The Rock Johnson impersonator, Jason Walker. We discuss family, mental health, the pandemic, and spend a lot of time laughing. Enjoy the show, and please, stick around at the end. We'll discuss how to properly wear Hinko jeans and how many snap bracelets can fit on my right leg. KQ Show. Welcome, everybody, to the KQ Show, episode 8. Today, the guest, married for over seven years, father of four, celebrating his 10th year as a full-time driver with UPS, previously a Dwayne The Rock Johnson impersonator at the Elkhart County Fair, <laughs> Jason Walker. <laughs> what up, man? How did you find out about that? <laughs> well, I was there. Jesus. Oh, so, man, honestly, how you how have you been? I mean, we just we just figured out a minute ago it's been eleven years. Or yes, yeah, yes, eleven years since you've been in town. It could be fifteen years since or twelve. Absolutely. Maybe? The funny story about that Dwayne thing. Like, if I had a literally a nickel for every time I've heard that, or some old lady saying stuff, I would literally be a millionaire, <laughs> probably a billionaire. <laughs> I've gone into places and people are like, "Oh my god!" And they're like looking at you and you're like, "Well, you know, I'm not him." And they're always like, "Well, you're too damn skinny." So I've always got you know the Ethiopian rock or some kind of the pebble stuff like that, yeah. you know. <laughs> So it's been, you know, what are you going to do? I just remember all the time, you're like, uh, on the radio at Best Buy, uh, yeah, someone else just called me The Rock. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> yeah, I used to get Tiger Woods, you know, before he ruined his oh, life. Oh, yeah, and so, yeah, you because yeah. you had both of them, just back and forth. Mm -hmm. So Anybody that was basically mulatto that looked like me, you know, and is famous, that's what I got. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of them, you know, you fit right in that old niche. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so what's up, Macy? You said 10 years now. I remember working, obviously, with you at Best Buy, but uh, I want to dive into UPS because that's huge. I remember you, you called me, we were talking about it, you called me today, you're like, yeah. I got in, like it was like an exciting day for you. Yeah. And I feel like that was just like last year, but I mean, right. 10 years. So what, I mean, what got you, I guess what got you to go to that way? And then what, uh, you know, what, well, what, I guess what kept you there? Well, being, you know, almost 30 years old and not really having a lot of direction and what I'm going to do and deciding to grow up a little bit because it took me forever to grow up. Um, answer the, you know, answer this ad, uh, filled out my application, got it going. And, you know, the rest is history with that. Yeah, so, that's crazy. Yeah. At at my at, at UPS, every six driver they hire is from outside the union. Okay, so you already usually have to know somebody to get in there, or you have to you know kind of be a legacy, like somebody's you know son or something. So I had none of that. They call so, it a legacy. You know, well, I mean that's kind of what I'm saying. You know, yeah, gotcha. there's a lot of um, there's a lot of drivers' sons that were you know that work there. So I basically went into that place and know nobody and um, started day one. They put me on an airplane from Indianapolis all the way to Maryland with no training, nothing like that at all, and to a driver school. So it's a five-day intense Monday through Friday type thing mm -hmm. where they, um, they drill everything, all the methods and all that stuff into your head and get you going to get, prepare you for, li or for, for UPS life. Yeah, yeah. And with the driving, like on you know, major highways out there in, uh, in Baltimore. So, uh, most of the people that, that already go there have got years of experience with, you know, seasonal driving, yeah. um, for the Christmas season or stuff like that. And I had zero of that. So the first day I'm there, I'm sitting there in the class and there's people raising their hands and they're saying, well, how long have you been there? You know, I've been with UPS five years or, you know, so-and-so has been in there six years. And I raised my hand. I was like, well, it's my first day. <laughs> and the administrator was like, well, good luck to you. And I said, well, do you have any, you know, you know, any uh, <clears throat> advice for me? He said, just ask questions. So I literally would just do that. You know, I would raise my hand yeah, constantly yeah. and say, you know, I don't understand about this or I don't understand about that. So I, I, I had the passion to want to do it. Yeah. I had, you know, a, um, a baby on the way that was going to be born in June and I started in April. So I knew I needed this. Yeah. And I wasn't going to let anything stand in my way, basically. 
So I mean, that's a huge position to get. Really, I mean, I <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I talked to a lot of people that <clears throat> spent time trying to get in there. So that's awesome. So mm-hmm. what? Because right away I knew uh, I got to hear some crazy UPS stories. Because I know you know we, we we've spent our time clowning at Best Buy. What are some crazy <sighs> ones that you've seen, or that you've, or even that you've heard? Well, um, the craziest I've seen is there's there was a, a time I had a, an overnight package that was going for a um, an apartment and it was in a low income area. So you know, low income areas is going to have you know funnier stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. Have, you never know what you're going to get. So I I pull up to the stop, <clears throat> I get out, I scan the package, and this person is in the car, looks at me and goes, "This is for you know so and so upstairs." I'm like, "Well, yeah." So I started walking upstairs. They're coming right behind me. So I'm kind of like looking behind my shoulder, like, what's going on? You know, what's up with this? So I get to the door. I I knock. And yeah. They're like, who is it, of course? And I'm like, well, UPS. And sometimes UPS scares people because they think it's like CPS. But I make sure and you say the UPS, you know. Oh, I got you. So they answer the door. And they're like, snatch the package out of my hand. Sign the little thing. And and as soon as um, they did that, they start screaming at the person down the stairs, like, I've got your money. This is a check. I've got all your money. And the dude comes running up the stairs. So I just ran down the stairs right past him oh. and just, just dipped out. Just like, you know, looked at my, my system. was like, oh, stop complete. I'm out of my next thing. Woo, woo, didn't hear anything. And, you know, that was it. Okay, I've got a great story that you just reminded me of UPS. Okay. <clears throat> so outside of Attica, Indiana. I don't know. You can think of, I don't know what comp you have up in Michiana, but Argos, baby. Okay. You can, you can think of that. There's a little, uh, there's a little plant place or place where, uh, I don't know, a, not a florist, but a place where you can buy plants. Like know. a greenhouse. A green. Yeah, sure. Okay. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm sure it has sorry, a Sorry, remedial. Okay. I'm sure there's a different name for it. I don't think it's greenhouse. <laughs> but the I mean, greenhouse. I'm yes. picturing it right. Right. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so I walk into this place, right? And you open the door, and it's just the smoke just punches in the face. <laughs> like stagnant smoke. We're speaking of like Cheech and Chong, but like times 10 with cigarette, right? Yeah. So I walk up to there, and I'm like trying to hold my breath and, you know, put my, my shirt over my nose because it's so bad. Because mm. I'm not a smoker. Yeah. And the the owner of this place has a cigarette, of course, out of his mouth. Hook, and he's got oxygen, you know, in his, you know, in his nose. And he's got the long line all the way across the shop so he can move around. And the worst part is this little puppy, this little dog, uh, Poodle, comes over. And it's got years, and I mean years, <laughs> maybe decades, just of just soot tar. and tar. Yes. And it's like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> please get me out of here. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, little Poochie loves you. And I'm like, you know, this fucking dog wants he, he to wants get me out to, of he, here. he wants me to take him. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, look, and he's just, and he wants to talk. Just rah, rah, you know, and they're, they're skilled at keeping a cigarette in their mouth without dropping mm-hmm. it, without ashing it, while still blowing smoke in your face. Yeah. And if you ever want to piss off a UPS driver, if you're signing the, the, the board, we call it a board. Mm-hmm. Just hold on to that, okay? So if you hold on to that thing while you're signing and talk to him, you can slowly start to see. So you can see your, your time clock evil. in your head. So yes, the evil start to come out. Oh, and I the angry and the, just the vitriol of all that one just punch you in the face. I've had people take that thing and they're like, and they'll sit it down and just start talking to me. I'm like, would you just fucking sign it so I can get going? And you can't go. You can't leave. You can't well, you just, can't leave it there. No. No. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'll leave my so truck if you ever want to make a mad, just hold on to that thing. And you'll just literally see them just seethe through their skin. That's a little trade secret. So, so I didn't have a lot of friends when I first started there either, too, I was, because I skipped the line. I was wondering that. I, I was, I was like, line. yeah, somebody's cousin. Yeah, my cousin Brian's supposed to start next week. But this guy comes in here <laughs> looking like the damn rock. <laughs> All bullshit skinny shit all skinny and shit <laughs> yeah no i yeah i i skipped four years basically of that and just walked right into driving yeah it's bananas. there's people there that like worked on the night side that had been there for five years that were waiting for their turn and i'm uh, getting right oh so you probably caused like a lot of divorces and stuff baby uh, baby yeah, next yeah. hey baby next month i applied already i'm getting <laughs> it on tuesday i'm gonna get on tuesday yeah so luckily though i mean i worked my ass off yeah so, yeah and also i mean it's not like you had to have done something during an interview process. You had to have had the right type of stuff, mm. you know. So, I mean, you know, it's not like you went in there going, "Yeah, y'all hiring?" Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm down. Driving it. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Throw it in yeah. Reverse. Can we ghost ride the whip? <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot ghost ride. <laughs> 
Oh, stuff that can I pick what I want first? Can I yeah, cover a couple patches? I got a box cutter. I can't go through it. Or <laughs> so, is there anything weird about like people like stealing packages or something? Mm. Like, I feel like it's. I always. I have, I, During I order, Christmas, I order you'll so see much. everything. Like you'll. It doesn't really happen where I'm at, but like in the bigger cities, you'll read, read stuff about like there will be people. It's going porch pirates. Well, they'll they'll follow a driver mm-hmm. and then we'll then drop off a package. And then sure enough, they'll come up and just steal it and run off. Yeah. So we're always taught to look for that type of stuff. But the places I'm at, it hard, I mean, it would never happen. Yeah. You so. ever get like an aggressive uh, uh, animals? I think it's like the dogs. I yes. always see the videos. Yes. Yes. Dogs are, and dogs are hard to read, man. Like sometimes you, I'm, I'm a pretty good judge of character when it comes to dog, but there's some, there's some of you just can't tell. I've been chased <laughs> a lot. <laughs> wow. A lot. But I mean, by some dogs, but I've never been bitten. So knock on wood. Like what happened? Like you're just dropping a package well, off, so waiting or what? The thing is, so when I, I mean, when if I'm in a rural area, I'm honking the horn because dogs are gonna come out. You know, they're they're not gonna be sneaky. But there was one dog, a German Shepherd, that lived on this one, uh, this one area, huge area of uh, a huge acreage lot, and this dog bit like three drivers, and it was a German Shepherd that would like hunt us. Okay. So even in our in our system, it would pop up like, "Do not get out of the truck, honk your horn." And a couple of these drivers were literally would drop the package off, no dog, walk up to the back of the truck, and by the time they got their foot on this the handrail or you know uh, stepping up, the dog would bit them in the back of the calf. And I'm like, deep German Shepherd style, it would sneak up there and get them. So it was literally hunting. Yes. Yes, this dog was doing that. So I would get to this stop because I I had had on my route a few times, yeah. and I would just and the person would come out and that stop, and I would not leave that truck. He was like, "Oh, the dog's only gotten a couple of you guys." I'm like, only got- <laughs> yeah, but then you're gonna if it gets me, it. then that's a few of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm yeah. not gonna. <laughs> yeah. So if we get bit, we it's a whole ordeal. We have to go sit down, watch a video on it, and all you know, just a bunch of stuff. It's generally our fault if we get bit. How? If a dog's hunting I mean, you? It's, but that's the thing. Like you, you can kind of figure it out, though, as well, too. If, like, if you see a dog over there, it's going, harf, harf, harf. we don't get in trouble either if we don't deliver the package. What so is it, it is, but you would get in trouble if you like chucked it yes. 25 feet and landed mm-hmm. on the porch. Yeah, so if I see a rabid dog and nobody's coming out, I'm not going to deliver your package. I'm I don't not know. Do it. Okay. Now, the worst, the worst a- instance is... Let's say a, a, a toddler is like, oh, I'm going to answer the door for you. Uh, so you walk up and there's no sound of a dog. The kid is excited to see um, you, opens the door, and then here comes Scruffy yeah. right between the legs. The rah, 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 rah. You know, that's happened plenty of times. There's plenty of times I've slammed that door on the, you know, on the person slash kid or whatever. Mm. So, yeah. That's crazy. You've never gotten bit, though? No, I have not. What about road know. rage, man? Because I feel like that's what's weird is... <laughs> I'm on the road too long to get too much. No, no, I'm saying people are rude against you guys. Like, I, I see it all the uh-huh. time. I'm like, this guy's doing a job. Yeah. Like, I, same thing if you have a, a DoorDash or Uber. Uh-huh. Like, if someone, that means they're doing their job. Yes. For you to cut them off and shit. And I've that seen, happens all the time. I'll be at a four way stop and this, these people be like, fuck you. And they'll just blow the, <laughs> blow the stop sign and just go right ahead of you, which is fine, you know. And you have to, my job, you're just, pre- you know, prediction. Like, this person's going to blow the stop sign. Sure enough, they do. This person's going to change the lane to cut me off. They're going to do it. You know, and, you know, and the best part is driving my cops. If I'm doing like 65 and a 55, I just wave a little bit and they don't ever mess with you. You'd have to be in all the, in the 10 years I've been there, I've only heard of one person getting pulled over and they just straight blew the stop sign. The cop was like, look, man, I, you gave me no choice. You didn't get, did you get a ticket or? Uh, I can't remember if they did or not. See, oh, damn. Yeah. But I, I, it's, I mean, I've never been pulled over or, you know, I've, I've done, you know, I, mean, I don't speed all the time, but, you know, it's one of those you're, you're getting where you're going. Right. Well, also, ten, I think, I feel like I, a 10 miles I'm per hour extremely is, safe. Yeah, yeah. 10 miles per hour over is perfect. Like, I feel like it, I set my cruise at nine over. Like, mm-hmm. nine over is going to say, hey. And that's in the highway. Like, I don't do that in residential neighborhoods. I don't Oh, I do that fast. all over. Like, school zones. I don't believe in school zones. <laughs> I go right through them. You know, I'm wanted in a couple like states. school buses, but... if you got the light out, like, ooh, bonus points. I try to hit the light. Yeah. Yeah, flip that in front of me. I'm taking it off. <laughs> that message is not true. <laughs> Kyle they call it in. Not I know his address. <laughs> he took my baby from me. <laughs> so what's the hardest thing about being an EPS driver? Time, time is just not your friend. You can you can literally lose so much time with with anything like <clears throat> sitting at traffic lights, 
or sitting at uh, a stop, you know, or like a business place where, you know, grandma's over there holding up the line, the register and stuff like that. And you got to get people to get signatures. COVID was almost the best thing that happened to us because we didn't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. It's the greatest yeah. thing ever is not having to talk to anybody. If I see you and if I'm in my Browns, I don't want to freaking talk to you. Now, did some of that, <clears throat> I don't mean to interrupt, but did some of that protocol roll over like to now? Like, is, is it easier now? Like, um, It's it's different now because we've gone back to signatures. So it is, because I remember like there was a lot of the, somehow they could talk to e-cig or like they could do it later or something. Um, it's more like you, uh, you if, if you're at a business and if you, if you just make eye contact with that person, you could sit it down and go. Okay. That was like, cause that's so what I used to take a look at the name and say, Oh, yes. Jason got you. Right, yes. Cool, cool. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, a trade secret is, you know, we'll see person and put, you know, doc, doc worker, or, you know, something stupid like that just to get moving or whatever. Yeah. So guy with loose denim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what, man? So what are you doing now? Like, what are your hobbies? I mean, besides, because obviously, four kids, full time job, and a wife. What do you do for fun? Well, spend most of my time, you know, with my kids. Um, they always, every time I get home from work, first thing I want to do after working twelve hours, almost sometimes, you know, two thousand calories a day, they want me on the trampoline. Oh yeah. So jump on the trampoline, do that. So stuff. it's like like a huge 16 foot trampoline okay yeah. a big circle or rectangle yeah, big circle, or, okay. above ground not the yeah. One? okay above, i got you yeah yeah jump on that with them uh work out and then spend time with my wife i see so, so. i saw you a picture with the kids uh, on like a box jump look like mm-hmm. at, a, at a crossfit place yeah so we have that in our garage oh that's your garage yeah that's pretty legit yeah so we've got we've built our stuff uh we've built basically a home gym so you know, with everything uh going on with covid and then everything closing down we kind of just slowly started building stuff so we can have it on our own and saving hundred plus bucks a month, you know, on gym membership fee times two is huge. Yeah, yeah. You've always been into into working out, and lifting, and that. What? Uh, how? Because I know, like, when I take a break from working out, <clears throat> mm-hmm. it instantly kind of affects like just my entire life. Everything. Like, yeah, I just everything. Feel like everything just starts breaking down, especially at the age I'm at. I'm almost yes. forty, so I'm like, oh, I didn't, I didn't go for like a walk or a run yesterday, and now I had I, my Achilles are both just snapped. I wake up and I feel like they're just glass. Right. So what do you do like when you think about like cardio and I mean do you do the high intensity stuff? What yes. do you do that is that what it is? Yeah, we do. I mean, we do our traditional lifts, and then we do you know your traditional globo gym type stuff, and then we do like the CrossFit stuff as well too. CrossFit gets some you know comes sometimes gets a bad rap just because of you know this you see people doing the pull-up stuff you know the butterfly pull-ups and it mm-hmm. looks silly but you know like as long as you have a good coach and a good base and no system it's it's fine you know it works out so i love it so yeah nice. she's doing that so what sports did you play in high school i ran track and played football nice. so what position a uh, receiver mm-hmm. yeah yeah so what's your accolades i mean i led the league and or not the league i led my team in receptions my senior year but it wasn't you know it's <laughs> I wanted so bad to be Jerry Rice, right? Yeah. And so I, in eighth grade, <laughs> I bought these batting gloves because I couldn't afford, like, you know, it was before, oh, yeah. you know, eBay and all this stuff. You know, you had... $120 pair yeah, of receiving yeah. gloves. Yeah, so yeah. I had batting gloves, basically, yeah. and they were slick as shit. <laughs> so I literally remember, like, uh, my coach calling two plays, and both times, you know, the ball comes to me right, th- you know, right through those beautiful <laughs> batting gloves that I was wearing. Yeah, I learned a lesson there to, you know, there's a reason why they're batting gloves. Yeah. And you would think that what the coach would be like, hey, aren't those Donruses? Aren't, you know, those aren't for receiving. Those are for batting. You say Donruss? Yeah. Cards, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah Donruss. I think fucked that up. It's Rawlings. That's Rawlings. Rawlings. That's what I was thinking. Yes. I, mean, I remember when when I tried to, so we were, we were a poor family, uh, you know, at the time, you know, we didn't know it. We just knew our, my, we, had, we got told no for a lot of stuff. So my dad, finally, I was like, I want to play basketball. Mm-hmm. And I was real short and fat, <laughs> but I could shoot. I was, for sure. I was like, you know, really round. Uh, so I was like, uh, hey, Pops, I want to try it for the team. He's like, all right, yeah, no problem. I go, I need to get shoot. So we went and, uh, you know, went to, um, mm-hmm. not not Espice. Yes. Espice was awesome. But it didn't get to go there. Uh, but he goes, uh, I think we ended up at like, whatever <clears throat> shoe store we had. I remember he goes, uh. Get these, uh, get these Everlast. And I go, Dad, those aren't, those aren't basketball <laughs> shoes. He, he had in his hand <laughs> some wrestling shoes. And he said, look, look, it was boxing. They were boxing. He's like, you know, the, the, you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Like very mm-hmm. not set up to protect an ankle, you know? Right, yes. I, was, I was like, Dad, I, Dad, those aren't, those aren't set up. You look at boxers can do it. No, well, these will work. And I was like, I don't 
I don't think I want to play basketball. I would rather not have people make fun of me the entire season for wearing <laughs> wrestling shoes or boxing shoes than to play the sport. So, you know, I, I'm just going to... He saw that price. He saw that thirty nine ninety nine or twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, he was going to find some way to spin it. Look, you can fit in those. Dad, these are winter boots. Well, <laughs> hey, if you can fight through the snow... <laughs> you can do anything. So I kind of talked to you a little bit earlier. We had to... Uh, so I, I asked a couple of the same questions um, every podcast. And then I also... I reached out to Facebook and I thought... Um, we can have some fun with some of these questions. Oh, Lord. All right. So, well, well the first, first one we got to ask, I mean, it's very important. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Hot dog sandwich. I would say yes. I mean, because, like, I think your previous people that you've had on here, <clears throat> bun and a meat together, it's a sandwich. That's what I think. So, bun and... Mm. So, you said bun, though. Yeah. Do you, so, do you label... I mean, so if, but let's say you don't have a bun, and I fold a piece of white bread with that hot dog in the middle, plop. Is that a hot dog or is that a sandwich? Or is it the same thing? Same thing, isn't it? So then, so then all breading wrapped around meat would be technically a sandwich. Yeah, I see where you're going with this. That's, that's, that's the concern. That I don't is, know if... That is the tough part. I yeah. feel like every time I ask this question on a pie, I think I change my answer. Because I'm like, no, no, wait, I don't think it can. I, I would say yeah, but I would say any... I don't know. I don't think it's the right answer. But it's a good debate. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I do love croissants. You know, mm -hmm. pigs in a blanket, stuff like that. Oh, see, a pig in a blanket is the epitome of meat wrapped. See, then now you're talking red. That could would that, that could almost qualify as a burrito. Oh, there you go. There you go. go. All right, let's uh, let's hit one of these guys. You ready? So you're gonna, you're, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask questions from people that you personally know. <laughs> so Wizzo wanted to know. Big debate. So you know Wizzo. Yes. Going for years. He wanted yes. to know. Usher or Tyrese? Not, <laughs> I saw that one. That's you like that, that one? one? And you, so, so not just musically. So where are you at with that one? I mean, they're overall. They're overall, I don't know, lifeography. I mean, Ty Tyrese is kind of killing the game right now, isn't he? He's got the Fast and Furious franchise. I mean, I don't know what else he's doing musically, but I mean, with that whole right there, isn't it? He's kind of just taken over with that. I mean, what is Usher? I haven't... When's the last Usher put out a lot of I was hoping that maybe you'd have more information on Usher than I would. I don't know. I've, I can't I mean, tell I, you. I've got Yeah stuck in my head, that song from 05. Mm -hmm. you know, that's literally been played for, you know, millions of times. Well, it's your ringtone. <laughs> 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 when you worked, because so, I, I forgot the time periods of when, like, I worked. Because I, I was looking this up. <clears> I was like, man, all right. I'm looking like it was like 2005. And the time, when did you start at Best Buy? Do you know the rough? 2008. Who do you remember from Best Buy? I mean, Kyle Moffin. <laughs> do you remember when it was Black Friday, dude? That's that's the fucking story, Jay Walk, dude. It's it's Black Friday, and remember he was geeked out on so many full throttles, right? How many did he have? Uh, so too many, way too many. I yeah. mean, the dude would walk around with he had penny loafers, literal penny yeah. in his penny loafers. He's a very strange bird. He talks like this. Yeah, you know, oh, Kyle, oh, Kyle oh, Moffin. Right. Yeah, yeah. We heard on the mic when he ran out of energy, so he had all these full throttles, right? Uh -huh. And he goes, well, yeah, really, I guys are starting out, not feeling, not really feeling too well here. <laughs> he kind of faded out, you hear Kuja go, Ma, but where are you at? He goes, oh. <laughs> you hear a noise, you heard him on the mic just fade out. <laughs> oh, man, if you could just see a picture of this cat, he was just, he was the strangest bird ever, very man. Very strange, very strange. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so first time you masturbated, where'd you put it? I'm just... <laughs> well, you know, I do have a funny story about that, though. Not masturbation, but my dad's porno, and or my porno that I had. I got stuck in the VCR. Yeah, it was great. Well, now you have to tell it. You can't just say the ending of it. So hold on. So you got, you got busted because it was caught halfway in. Well, <sighs> my wife's going to kill me. Anyways, so. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> I don't know, 16 years old, you know, like, you got your, your video, mm -hmm. and uh, you have it in the VCR, and I, my, my dad bought, you know, the 1980s Sears catalog Oh yeah, in a VCR with the actual, like, buttons on the outside of it, and, you know, super old school. Mm -hmm. So, the baby's in there, you know, press play, and all of a sudden he goes, Zzz, and it, like, freezes up. So, I'm like, what is going on? So I go over there and I try to eject it, and it goes. <laughs> like started eating the tape. It started eating. You the hear tape. the stuff coming yes. out. I'm like, 
<laughs> oh god i'm trying like beating on this thing i go you know i'm trying to open press eject eject <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear the garage door open of course you know it's like a sitcom you know yeah I mean? right so no. i just go run upstairs and sit in my bed you know i'm eating dinner and nothing's you know everything's fine and uh about nine o'clock at night or who knows what time it was i hear my dad turn on the tv and press his play on the and sure enough <laughs> i'm like i'm like come on you know, i'm like sitting up there never saw the video ever again yeah he Ooh. sent it off to the repair shop and then oh so he so, so he he kept so that it. porn was not in there mm, before. no no okay no. so yeah. he he just hit play to see what video was in there. he didn't bring it up to you i mean no no so with my dad, no, he's not confrontational. See, I didn't he think I, my plan was I didn't think my dad would come to me and tell me when he wanted to watch a tape. No, right. he didn't. He busted me right out. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm sixteen year old. You know, you're gonna do stupid shit like that. So, so what other uh, what's the other crazy shit you do when you're younger? I know you gotta have some stories, man. Because your brother, you had a, he was an older brother, right? Yeah, three you had, years you had, older. You have, yeah, I thought you, had, you don't have a sister, do you? No. Oh, well, yeah, I have a half sister. Okay, okay. But so you're like you have your brother. Yes. And yeah. then you have, what, what, what are the siblings? So, I'm an older brother, three years older, and then a half sister that lives in Missouri. Okay. So that we don't really talk to that often. So, I mean, we would do your typical stuff, you know, get on BMX bikes and just go all over the city, do stuff like that, get into, st- you know, in trouble. Nothing. I, I was, see, my, my thing is my brother was an alcoholic and I watched him like ruin his life. So I kind of just had the, the security blanket of that. Like, I knew I didn't want to do that stuff. So I kind of just stayed away from it. How old were... I mean, when did you, I mean, how did you, like... So, okay, I remember a story I'll tell you. When he was in high school and I was in, like, eighth grade or whatever, I remember going to a party and we got there, I don't know, 11 p.m. or so. I don't know why my parents would let us go out at that late, especially me being an eighth grader and him being, you know, just a you know sophomore or whatever. <clears throat> and he gets there late and I remember his friends were like, Dude, Julius... You're here. You're late. Catch up, man. And he grabbed two Coors Lights, tall boys, cracks those babies open, and just proceeds to throw both of them down his gullet. <laughs> and I'm watching them I'm like, oh, my God. And they're like, yeah, man. Yeah, keep going. And they're like, you want a beer? I'm like, uh, I guess. So I remember being, you know, very influenced and then watching him just get blackout drunk. And I'm like, I don't really want to do that. Yeah, because you, I mean, really, you don't really drink too much, do you? Uh, not that often, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, cause remember you... <laughs> I mean, again, it's, it's dating us, but... Yeah. I mean, you know, way back, I'm talking, you know, pre-marriage of kids, everything else. Yeah. So, uh, last Thursday. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, last Thursday, yeah. No, I mean, I remember you'd go out and you'd be like, man, you guys... You guys are able to drink this much? Like, uh, keep going? Because we took it like... I we could took it. never... You okay. could... No, there's no way. Anybody could. I couldn't keep up with you guys. <laughs> There was, I would literally, I would drink like, you know, like sippy sippy, and I would order Sprite sometimes to make it look like vodka. And yeah. I would seriously do that, and I'd bend the straw like you guys did, at, you know, at Backer, yeah. and I would bend the straw like, yeah, this is good, ooh, I'm getting fucked up, you know, and it was just Sprite, because I could not physically keep up with your guys' drinking. It was unbelievable. I mean, and we, if I did, if I had a couple of drinks, I'd be like, uh, you know, falling over or whatever. Oh, you were a fun drunk, though, man. Yeah. You, you a lot clown. Of singing falsetto and stuff. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but that was just a normal thing, yeah. What was the drunkest you've ever been in your life? What's that? What was the drunkest you've ever been in your life? Uh, the drunkest? Probably. <laughs> probably the last time I came up here. <laughs> oh, yeah? What happened? Yeah, well, we, my buddy Aaron and I came up here to visit you guys. And when he and I would hang out, and then until we go out, we'd always play the game of who can get the drunkest. And the idiot would be who could convince the other to buy a shot of Patron as their last thing. Yeah. Because Patron, you know, goes so down oh, smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah, very smooth. Based so, on both of you know, you'd have, you know, your set amount of what your real limit is. And the goal was to always get that person to go over the next limit. Yeah. So my dumbass decided and I was like, oh yeah, I'll do a shot of Patron, you know, I'm good. <laughs> and he gives it to me and I'm drinking it. And I remember the room spinning, like literally spinning. And you've told me before that you don't get the spins, right? I don't. I, I've See, heard of everybody. I know. You're like I, a, I know. That's your superpower. You don't get the spins. I don't know. I guess you can call it that. But it's literally the worst feeling in the world because you're just sitting there and the room is just... This is what he says, yeah. And they, when you lay down, it doesn't yeah. fix it. Yeah, or... and you lay down, it's good. Oh, you're still in that on that ride. And you want to throw up, and you know when you when you finally get rid of it, it helps. But yeah, and that's the thing I can't do is I can't throw up. I can't. I cannot. It sucks. I, so I mean, I guess it's a, a balance. But I wish 
there's nights where I've just been like sick, sick. Like I've never in my life thrown up off of alcohol. I've really? never done it. Yeah, I don't. My body processes things real weird. Yeah. So you said you've never done the trick of going into the bathroom and sticking I your fingers. I have <laughs> mashed my arm down my throat. <laughs> I have made every gagging noise. I've done everything. I'm watching YouTube tutorials on how you throw up because you know when you're sick, it feels you feel so much better. Oh yeah. It's like it's like yeah. blowing a load when you when you get a throat like yes, yeah. I'm gonna go to work. Everything's great. Yep. You know. But I would just sit yeah. there going Bleh. nothing. Yes. Nothing. I would like do the little stomach heave thing. You try to pretend like, yeah. that thing. Nothing. 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 I I can't. It doesn't come out. Wow. But I'll shit a storm the next day. Yeah. Like liquor, like I'm talking splash. Like I have to shower. <laughs> like if I take, yeah. Chardon. Dude, Chardon. Oh, dude, the liquor shits were, when, when me and James liquor together, dude, we'd have just sharp meetings. We just get rotated out. Like, dude, we didn't need toilet paper for a couple months. We're like, no, nah, I know what that's like. Just uh, peeing out your butthole, huh? Just the splat, the sound of it is real. It is, I feel like a woman sitting down taking a very long pee. That's what it sounds like. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's life with kids. Speaking of that, my, my son, my youngest, Literally just got done having diarrhea. And that's the worst because when you're a kid, you don't know any better, mm-hmm. right? So my four-year-old last night, God love my wife. She literally was in bed, took care of the whole thing while I just laid there like my lazy butt. She got up and we heard, at least I heard him go, oh, 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 and just <laughs> puked everywhere, okay? And it's they don't they don't get up and be like hey I'm gonna throw up I'm gonna go yeah. to the bathroom and lift the toilet seats and just go ahead and gently just throw this in here and then flush the toilet and I'll just go back to bed Dad okay Mom and Dad no they just bah, all over themselves <laughs> all over the chest all over the bed it's just everywhere just right a fountain. just a fountain like you know Exorcist style throwing up everywhere and you're like oh and you hear it and it just sounds like it sounds like the worst sound you've heard and the smell is even worse. So she goes in there, cleans it all up, and then, of course, in the next morning, what's he do? Shits his pants. <laughs> and diarrhea in his pants. And it's not like, okay, mom, you know, I'm, I need to go to the bathroom. I'm going to sit on the toilet. I'm going to, you know, do this and then wipe and it'll be done. Nope, just shit right into the pants. He's like, did it. Yep. Too late. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. But no, the other one thing, it just, just, you know, to, since we're now talking about it, throwing up, <clears throat> the worst that when you do, because if I'm sick, sick, and uh-huh. it comes out, man, it's like a. I remember, I remember uh, my buddy, uh, Jeremy Sexton. I don't know if you know Sexton. Yes. Yeah, very large individual. Yes. Yeah, so very strong. I heard him throw it up one day. I was like, man, you, damn. Like, it's loud. It's scary loud. Like, he's like, bah! Like, he was everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I didn't, you know, my instincts go, oh, I'm going to clown on him about this. But I was like, are you, you all right, man? Like, <laughs> right. He, and he's like, oh. oh so, the next night, I'm in there doing the same. And dude, the worst, you throw up everything out of your body. And then all of a sudden, you get that, uh, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing comes out yes it hurts your yes. soul it's not fun it's the it's i don't know what it is it's like it's just i feel like yeah <laughs> there's nothing left to give and uh-huh. you just go eh! it's yeah. that weird noise you that, even saying that right now like yeah. gives my body a reaction <laughs> well, don't don't yeah yeah i'm over like oh, 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 oh. i got i got it on my bucket list get someone to throw up live in my living room mm-hmm. yeah well, or again right so what do you, you ever so you know, you know, you never did anything really, like, like drug wise. Like you never really, you were really a smoker or anything like that. No, or? not really. No, I never always kind of stayed with stuff. Like again, my brother being, you know, kind of showing me what not to do in life. I kind of stayed away from that. Stuff. So what do you mean? So it, did it, it went? So he got worse after high yeah, school. And oh, yeah. So did it, it? Yeah, it progressed into the basically full blown alcoholism. So like you saw that and oh yeah, yeah. I mean to the point where uh, he it was bad. It was really bad. So and I I, I just knew I didn't want to do that. And I think part of it was, you know, alcoholism runs in my family. Oh, I don't know. So yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's a on deal. mom dad side, mom's mom side. My grandpa drank drank himself all the time, and then actually, my mom was born. Is the story tells that when my mom was born, he stopped, and he never had a drink again. So I don't remember him ever as an alcoholic. I never saw him ever drink or anything like that. So that was pretty cool. Well, that's good. Yeah. So your mom didn't, or what? I mean, she would have an occasional, you know, occasional drink. Yeah, but not. But nothing, nef- never. She was never, I never, I was never a uh, person had to go to therapy because my mom was a drunk and thrown up yeah. herself and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. I mean, it seems like, it made, so it's not as, like, it seems like a controllable, mm-hmm. I guess, addiction. Right. Well, and then with my dad being a degenerate gambler, I kind of knew to kind of stay away from that stuff. Like, I'm so thankful he doesn't have, a- he never had access to, DraftKings or FanDuel or that stuff because he would have literally lost his money on that. So how do you get in? I mean, wh- when did you? He so a funny story. I don't know if it's really funny, but he like so he worked. He was a postal worker for thirty three years or however long. Well, that's where you get yeah. from. You knew it. Mm-hmm. It's in your genes. It's in my blood. It's in my blood. <laughs> yeah. And 
I remember some of his his coworkers coming up to me and be like, yeah, your old man almost got fired. I'm like, why? What did he do? Well, he had a huge racket during March Madness. He had a whole racket of the whole entire place. He was literally giving out people like their spreads and the odds and taking money and doing all this. The postal inspectors had to come and talk to him about it. I'm like, the federal agents? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like, the federal agents came and talked to him? At his little key, his little cube, because they, you know, before yeah. work, they sort the mail and that stuff. They came to his little thing and were like, Mr. Walker, you can't be doing this stuff anymore. He's got yarns <laughs> yes. connected all the different teams. Right. <laughs> and he, he would, every year for the March Madness, he had, would draw up a huge um, bracket. And I never knew why he would do all this stuff, but now I've kind of figured out, put pieces together. And uh, so my dad was a huge Michigan fan. And his his he what he would do is he would bet all of his friends um, money, and then on top of that, he would bet, like, pop. Like, he loved mug root beer, right? <clears throat> but he would bet all of his friends, like, a case of mug root beer, so, or, or whatever, whatever their fancy was. And, but he would have, like, 15 bets, so the problem is if he lost, he would have to buy like 15 cases of drink when each one of these people only had to buy one. Yeah. So I'm like, Dad, what, what are we doing here? He's like, <laughs> you see this shit over here? He's like, I can clean it up. I'm like, Dad, you, you, you it's, it's terrible. If maybe you lose, you're going to be in the worst mood ever. And now I understand when I was a kid why when Michigan lost, he was always in a bad freaking mood. Because you would have to go out. And, you, know, yeah, you, you had to go with him. You have to carry, carry <laughs> yes. cases of cases of just <laughs> just root beer to some yeah. dude named Jack's house. Yeah, yeah, or, or whatever, like Pepsi or Mountain Dew or whatever. Yeah. You know. So back when they used to, come, do they still come in cubes? I don't know. I haven't in bought cubes. Pop. Yeah. Do you remember that when um, like Mountain Dew and Pepsi used to come in cubes? No, I don't know what that means. Yeah, the twenty four packs that you used to oh, like, yeah, the, yeah, the box. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like some other like you pop the cube. You're <laughs> sort of acrid drinking. <laughs> Your... Ah, this is delicious. Baby, you want some? Hang on, hang on. I got to hold to the sides. <laughs> I'm just picturing a big Rubik's Cube with a right, nozzle. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're good. So what I mean, so it, was it just, just sports gambling? I mean, so you said it got worse. I don't know. Like, would it yeah, he turn would, into different, thing, different things he or would, what? I mean, he would just, whatever tickle your fancy, he would he would gamble on all, on all of it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so you don't do any of the, so you don't, you don't, you don't do any gambling at all. No casinos, no, no anything? Uh, no, I mean, we'll go and, you know, I'll have $20 or whatever. And it's funny because I'll put that money in and I can feel it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa you got to stop it. What you do know? you mean? You can feel it. Well, like that rush. Like I can understand why this shit is so addictive. And then you go over and if you lose your money, you're like, well, uh, I can go get more. And be like, I shouldn't do that. And I'm not going to do it. You know, and then you look up and there's those cash advance machines. So you can let just swipe whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. So, yeah. I actually, I don't know if we even talked about it in the podcast, but Dave Chappelle, his his genius of living where he does in Dayton, you know, mm-hmm. lives like he's got it figured out. He should be. I feel like he he started so young, and it's crazy to watch his um his first stand up when he was seventeen. That's yeah. crazy. He yeah. was be, with he was hair, a, actually having hair. He was a stand up comedian for four years before he was legally allowed to drink. That's crazy. That's bananas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the time it takes, the passion, the, you know, to write and that stuff, and to he, you know, to hone his craft with that, it's, it's impressive. Yeah. He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's probably one of the best stand-up comedians out there because the way he, I mean, what he did with his last, he just, he just grabs you by the face and he goes, "Check it out, you got a problem?" Mm-hmm. Boom, because he's, because he also he's a good human. Yeah. If you if you start a base of I'm a good fucking human, you yeah. know, and he proved it when he did when he walked away from fifty million dollars because he yeah, didn't want to be gosh. that guy. That's that mm-hmm. t- that's so much. Uh, you have to just say, hey, you're on a different echelon than other people. Like, when you're able to walk away from something like that. When kids are walking up to you and saying, I'm Rick James, you know. Yeah. When he's just with his family. You know, <laughs> he just, like, he's like, thanks, he's, cool. Yeah, I'm out right. having dinner here. Yeah. Fazoli's right. in Dayton, Fazoli's. Ohio. You got some little seven-year-old going, I'm Rick James, bitch. Yeah. I'm having dinner. <laughs> I just want some breadsticks, okay? Just try to get the free breadsticks. Well, you can, as long as you have this one. Bitch! <laughs> you want another one? Okay! <laughs> Dude, Chappelle's show though. I remember uh, I was twenty when yeah. that was when that was hopping, hopping, like tw- yes. two thousand three. Edge of your seat, appointment television. You, you, there, there was no like appointment television. There was no um, DVRs no. or TiVo at that no. time. You it was, had like, to. We, we played basketball in Notre Dame. Yep. Remember, it came on like ten p.m. Yep. It was nine like thirty seven. We got to go, man. Chappelle yeah. show's Chappelle coming shows on. on. You'd see everybody else go. Oh, for real? Everybody would just leave the court. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come back an hour later. <laughs> yes. 
It was yeah. so groundbreaking, though. The shit they got away with. Yes. Dude, his first episode, yes. Clayton Bigsby. Yes. That skit is so, good. so hilarious. Yes. So, but it would get picked apart by everybody in their grandma nowadays. Yeah, you can't say that. But what can't you say? Like, it, it was so right. clever that it was that it was okay. It, it, it was such a good show, man. And his face, like, I, his, <laughs> his face is what I loved. Like his blind, you know, <laughs> racist black. Yeah. You know, we're standing there with that, you know, with that terrible mustache and then the gray stuff. It was just so good. And the lines on that were, were just phenomenal. Dude, too. he had such a, like the racial draft was so hilarious. Yeah. That was just so clever. Like mm-hmm. you were watching it and it was so funny. It was it was it was so much more funny than racism. Yeah, like it didn't have it. It, it was just, it was just, this was the fun, like in Living Color, like this shit that yeah. back in the day that you know you'd be able to get away with and and I think the Key and Peele did it did it really well too. They were really good with it. Like they ran that. They basically were the next two mm-hmm. uh, Chappelle, which I really fucking love. Like Peel Peel is doing his thing too. He's such like that a movie, genius. That movie that looks that what's that supposed to call? Um, uh, d- d- uh, water. What, yeah, yeah. It's got a um, nope. Nope. nope, there it is. It's yeah. called Nope. Yeah, well, you've seen his first two, right? Yeah. Get Out blew so my mind, took good. my mind out of my head. And yep. I was, that was such, like, so good. You've got goosebumps. Like, mm-hmm. I was, I was like, and she, oh, she was such a good evil bitch, dude. She, she was. played that role so, like, the beginning with the cop scene. And yep. he's like, oh, she went to bat for me. And uh-huh. then, dude, it was such a good idea. He's yeah. so clever. Yes. And it's crazy, man. He, and the, the fact that he just, he just brought, I'm going to do horror out of nowhere. Like you know, he he just shows the, the you know the diversity of what he can do. And, and what's it's so amazing. weird is that I I I don't like horror movies. I don't. Either. I wouldn't even classify um, Get Out as mm-hmm. horror. It is for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. It is for sure. But because it was so fucking clever, the yeah. uh, the, 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 the sunken zone, what they call the, uh-huh. uh, the sunken oh, place, I the sunken felt zone. That. Yes, I you felt do. That. It was. Oh. <laughs> I felt that. And yeah. it was uh, the the others or the strain was the the. Oh gosh! The other that that was that was different. I liked it. It was it was clever, yes. mm-hmm. but it was that was a little bit more horror side. Yeah, which I was like, okay, you know, I liked it, but it's but it, it, it's just it, the others. The others was just white people killing white people. That's all that was. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. But it was it, his 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 level of like to bring something new to a category. Nobody's bringing anything new to horror. Guess no. what? It's somebody you know. It's a ghost or it's a uh-huh. demon. That's about it. Like it was such a weird, clever idea. Yeah, and it just blew me away. Yeah. It was it was insane. That was yeah, it was a really good movie. It was because it takes my attention span doesn't um, exist. <laughs> so no way, <laughs> no freaking way. So like for me to like you know to be able to get into a movie and just yeah, that's how it was a Squid Game. Squid Game. So, did you watch? I binge watched that in Florida <laughs> on vacation. <laughs> uh, you know, with my wife and kids. They go to bed and I turn on Squid Game, <laughs> and I would fast forward like the stupid parts. Yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, like. You know, and I and I read the subtitles. Yeah. And, I, and actually, no, I turned that off, and I remember I just they had it was dubbed. So that yeah, was, I went dubbed. Yeah, I, subtitles are cool, but like again, unless you're watching like Quentin Tarantino, my, my brain just my brain spins out too much. I'll, I'll start reading, and I will never watch the screen, or I'll never watch yes. what the action yes. sees happening. Huh? Yeah, uh, grunting noise. What are they <laughs> grunting for? <laughs> yes, yes. Squid Game was crazy. My, I thought the genius of it was that red light, green light. That really, because it was before anything really popped off. Yeah, in post everything, you kind of knew what to expect. Yeah, but you're just but just tossing that, that big ass light. room with some big ass doll and yes. people getting killed. Yes, that blew my mind Un- unbelievably. Dude, good. that's nuts. So good. It was. It was definitely. It was something that uh, it came out of nowhere. And they, like like Netflix, twenty bucks a month. Like uh-huh. on Netflix, if you're listening, you know, if you want to be a sponsor, I'll. <laughs> I'll keep you, but I canceled again. Hook me up. Uh, like Ozark. I love Ozark. I don't know if you can know Ozark or not. I nope. Dude, it's nope. Is that on Netflix? Yeah, it's bananas. Is it's it? such a... Uh, it's such... I don't even explain it. It's one of those things where you, you watch it and you go, all right, uh, I'm going to probably watch the rest of this. It's, mm-hmm. I would say it's... I would say it's closely compared to like a... Um, in, in the same genre, it's kind of like a Breaking Bad. Okay. But... Um, but Jason Bateman is so hilarious, dude. Yeah. He's such a good actor. Like he's so. I don't know. I, I can't explain. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to explain. But it's well a good one. with a house full of kids. With Disney Plus pretty much takes over everything. My nine year old's really big into sports because it knows that if he can watch sports, he can stay up late. So that's Smart his thing. Kid. Is, hey, Dad, you want to watch basketball tonight? Hey, Dad, you want to watch baseball tonight? You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And we it was October. 
And, you know, that's like in October when you got the NBA or oh, not, yeah. sorry, NBA is just starting. Yep. And then you got the baseball playoffs and then football is yep. in full swing. Mm-hmm. And so, I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's all, oh, yeah, the yeah. big, big sports. Yeah. So we would watch football and he loves football. And then baseball, you know, he's like, can we watch baseball? I'm like, sure. And he's like, I don't know if I want to watch baseball anymore. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of boring, isn't it? <laughs> that's what you so, put it yeah. on. He goes, I, well, I want to fall asleep when I watch that. Let's try something else. Right. Yeah, exactly. So he, he figured out that if he can watch that, he can stay up later. So you took a whole bedtime thing then? Is that what? I, I, again, I'm not not a parent, but I mean, um, you have four kids. So is I? Well, I guess th- I mean three because I mean you're, yeah, you're oldest. Yeah. He's he's yeah. he's there every other weekend. Yeah. So, but also, it's not you're not gonna have to give him bedtime. He's no he right. fifteen or so almost, fifteen. Wow, 15, he's gonna be yeah. driving soon. Yeah, next year. That's so. Bananas. I get home from work, and God bless my wife because she's like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like these kids are driving me crazy. God bless her. That's that's the hardest job, ten times harder than when I do it. You know, at UPS. So I get home. And it's literally like, here's dinner, kiss, kiss me on my forehead, I'm going out. You know, I, I'm <laughs> yeah, going upstairs. Yeah. Yep. So she goes up, I hang out with the kids, wrestle them around, bedtime routine, and it's usually always the same thing. And so the youngest will go to bed, no problem, real easily. It's the middle child that wants to, I'm thirsty, I need a, you know, I need this, I need my book, I don't like how you read the book, I'm going to do this, I need to give mom a hug. I need to, you know, whatever, you know, just anything but go to bed. And so the nine-year-old has no issues going to bed. He's just, it's time to go. But it's that five-year-old. It's just middle child never wants to ever go to bed. And I've always got to sit in his room for two minutes. That's his thing is two minutes, which is really like 25. Mm -hmm. So usually I just sit in there, you know, read him a book, and then he'll get laid down, and he'll have to yell at him 65 times. You go to bed, you know, and all that stuff. So, and finally he will, and he'll just knock out. They're all, all three of the boys are just like my wife, where they go, and my mother-in-law, where they'll go 7,000 miles an hour during the day, Mm -hmm. and then just crash and burn. They'll hit a wall and just crash and burn and fall asleep right there, wherever they're at. It's amazing. I I wish I had that. It's, 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 it's uncanny. Like, I'll watch them all literally 1,000 miles an hour. They're, and then they're asleep. Yeah. That also so. sucked. It's like, that's the same thing. Like, my brother was always a, uh, you know, because when we were younger, we had a, I think we had the same bedroom for a little bit. Uh, but man, I was so jealous of him because he would just, I'd be like, like, lay down and I'd hear him just out. Uh-huh. I'm like, hey, Brandon. <laughs> Nothing. I go, damn it. You up? You asleep? Yeah. We both got weird. So like, I have the, the restless legs insomnia and he, he, he just, he could instantly fall asleep so fast. I'm like, so my dad, I'm, I'm like, really? Like, I'm like, my mom was up wandering around the house. Yeah. Like, just for six or seven hours in the middle of the night. I go, well, I'm not sleeping. Yeah. I that's to, that's where my anxiety kicks in is where like, I'll be, I'll be exhausted during, you know, I'll be watching like a, you know, a, a game and I'll be able to fall asleep. As soon as I lay in bed though, it's ready to think about whatever. So what do you go through when you say anxiety? Um, basically I, I'll have, I'll have uh heart flutters all the time and it's, I've always been checked out and nothing's ever wrong. It's just, so what always, you, I don't know what that means. Either. So heart flutter meaning like I'll, I'll feel my heart like not, it, it feels like it's skipping a beat, but it's not. It's just like, and then I'll feel like my heart's racing as well too. So uh, this, my anxiety really started um, about 15 years ago when um, I was in a terrible relationship and I was also like overweight and just love pounding Burger King, McDonald's, all that's just terribly eaten. So, um, I remember my first like, panic attack was after I went to Burger King. I went to go visit my mom who lived in Illinois at the time. And I was on my way to go visit her, pounded a double cheeseburger, biggie, you know, whatever meal and with a, with a, um, apple pie. <laughs> Just crushed all right, it. All right, now Just I agree. Crushed it. You, 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 top, you, you did the fat kid apple pie. Yeah, yeah. You topped it all off. I, it, it, it was like my favorite part was like unzipping that Burger King pie. Like, <laughs> zzz, you know, like... You know, just the sound is like, mm, I'm about to get this. It was a Dutch apple pie, right? <laughs> yeah. Open that baby up, smell it, take my all my bites, and then I had a Dr. Pepper to drink with it. Oh, yeah, because you need, we yeah. need to finish off with more sugar. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I remember driving on whatever road I was on to go in Illinois and just my heart beating on my chest and literally lost it. Sweating, had to pull over, was like almost in tears, couldn't figure out what was going on. Just, my body was just over it. It was just done. You know, and then it was just all everything with the bad relationship, bad food, all bad time, which all came to fruition. And finally, I was like, I got to change stuff. So got rid of the bad relationship, stopped eating shit, 
and suddenly the anxiety became better. But it was so crippling before that, before I figured out what was happening, that I didn't want to leave my house. Like I wanted to, like I wouldn't, I wanted to stay. I couldn't go on road trips anywhere farther than work or anything. It was terrible, yeah, really it was crippling. Yeah, and I just couldn't figure out what it was. And then finally, the light bulb came off about I need to change. What so, I'm what do you think happened in your body that, that changed it? Well, you mean to make it better? Yeah, no, because I, obviously, I mean, what, what made that change? Obviously, even eating better. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what, what do you think? What happened? Like, Controlling it to, to understanding that I'm not <clears> dying. Like what your other people on the podcast have said about understanding that I'm not going to die. Things are going to be okay. I just need to just calm myself. Even to this day, like I won't drink coffee before I go on an airplane just because it, you know, it gets you going. So I just, I don't, I, I can stay level as long as I don't drink coffee before I get on an airplane, like in the morning, like on the way to. So do you have, you have a problem with flying then? No, no, oh, so I'm fine. It's just like anxiety a- of, of, I don't know. It just, sitting in there with no control i guess yeah like the you, you hop yourself up to sit yeah and i get anxious because i'm excited to go to where i'm going on the way home though i can have six cups of coffee on the way you know flight home and it's not a problem so it's so it's in it because anxiety is a funny it's, it is a i don't mean to say funny it's word crazy uh, but it, so it's it is, the craziest thing it's nuts do you think because I get, I get to every time Every time we do a podcast, man, I, yeah. Uh, before, I, but I, I found mine, uh, and again, I, I only explain the story because it's just my, my personal experience. I know people yeah. have had crazy panic attacks that they yeah. can't figure out. And that's why I like to ask these questions because maybe mm-hmm. you know, but <clears throat> but it's it, it's just uh, it's the same feeling I felt when I was young and excited. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm excited that you're on yeah. the way here. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, but, but all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna be here in like 20 minutes, and all of a sudden, like, I'm like, but I think it. Uh-huh. it, it I try to balance that, and that, that, but that's a great feeling. I, I know that I'm excited about something, but I'm still going through something small. So I can't imagine what people in the worst place in their life when they hit that level, you know? And it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, I, I, I mean, on the way here, heart, I had heart flutters. I'm anxious. My you know, palms are sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> all that. You know, and it's just, but I, I know I'm fine. I'm, it's not a big deal. And it's just, I get real anxious. And in, like last night, I did sleep well. I, I just didn't, because I knew I was excited to come up here and do that. I feel bad. I feel like everybody has said that to me. I feel like I'm, I'm yeah. hurting people's sleep cycles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My Apple Watch tells me that I'm not sleeping well, you know. Hey, is there a pop-up there when, like, man, so you, you mentioned the heart rate thing. I was I was in front of a customer that was, like, I'm not rude to customers, uh-huh. but uh, I will be rude to customers. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but it, it, there's a certain level. Like, I don't handle, don't be... Um, don't be racist, sexist, or any anything against anything biased, any pre- yeah. prejudice at all. Once you jump over that line, then I get to I get to have fun. Then that's where I go. Okay, well let me. Let have me you jump. had customers be racist? I've been in retail for twenty one years. You think I didn't run across a couple of those? Yeah, yeah. It always starts with let me tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> or let me tell you one thing. Like, oh, God damn it! Let me go. We call him Duke from Dwajak. <laughs> <laughs> been dealing with Duke from Dwajax for years. Oh my god, dude! No, they'll come in. They'll be like, uh, the one guy was just prejudiced against everything. So he's like, uh, I had a system manager. This, it was Australian. He's, like, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to hear that. I go, what do you mean? What? Because right away, right away, I, I don't, I don't mean to attack people what? this way. But I was, I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, he's not from here. Where are you where? from? <laughs> I go, where are you from? Yeah, where's your family from? Well, European and that I go. Hmm. I just kept looking at him. I go, yeah. Yeah. yeah so what'd you going. just say out loud? Because uh-huh. so you're mad at this Australian gentleman, okay? Oh my god! You know, for working here. So eventually, I go. All right, we'll check it out. Come on up. You're next. Walked him right to him. <laughs> right to him. Like I go. Uh, he's got a lot of questions. I'd spent some time with him. <laughs> just walked away. Wow. But no, you, that, that was like a little. That was that was an easy one. I'm not going to go into details about other ones. That, yeah, you know, people yeah, yeah. have said you know drop the n bomb, of course, of course, and like bash people for being gay or I have, being. And... I have a great story. Whenever you're finished, go ahead. No, get there. Okay, get there. so <laughs> the uniform for me really eliminates any kind of problem. Like I've never felt, uh, like I've ever been in a bad situation to where I couldn't get out of or whatever. But so I was in a small town, you know, Hickville, mm-hmm. Indiana, right? Argus. 
And yes, close to there. <laughs> and it was in a gun store, right? So if that tells you, you know, like, you know, it's just <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah I'm about just, to say, you're like, you're like, like something in my ancestor tells me not to go in this <laughs> right. building. Like, Don't do it. <laughs> that was the worst accident ever. Yeah. So I walk in this place and I'm delivering packages and there's a bunch of good old boys just sitting in there shooting the shit, you mm-hmm. know. And this guy is like a local sitting in this gun shop goes, you know what? Watch out, you know, watch out your truck. There, you know, there's niggers running around robbing stuff. And I'm just looking at him and I just stop and I look at the gun shop owner. And he's looking at me like, oh God, like he's red in his face too. And I'm just like, well, thank you, sir. Have a great day. You know, <laughs> yeah. So I'm putting this stuff down and he's just like, oh, and I hand him the thing to sign. He signs and I just go on my merry way. And I was like, I can't believe that just happened. So I was subbing it for that route at that time. Mm-hmm. And I told the driver, the regular guy, I was like, you know, this is what happened. And he was like, what? So this old man, you know, like literally I'd never felt more respected in my life ever than when this old driver, old timey driver who looked like he could be sitting in the shop went in there and like, was like, don't ever do this again. This oh. person is weird trying to feed his family. You know, he's, you know, doing his best as he can. This is bullshit. So I went in the next time. The gun shop owner actually like apologized to me. Well, that's badass. Yeah, yeah it that's was good so shit. cool. You know, like the fact that this old man had my back. You know, just for he didn't have to do that. He could have been like, "Well, that sucks, rookie." Yeah, you know, good luck to you. But just the fact of because you know I've worked my tail off to yeah. where I'm at. So yeah, it was really cool to have that experience. That's crazy, man. And then for the people, you know, like I said, they. I don't know if they think I'm like Samoan or if they think I don't know, you know, whatever. Well, you've been called all of the above, at least. Yeah, and yeah. we have a we actually have a Hawaiian guy that works with us. He's from Hawaii. Looks Hispanic. And lives in a like a an area where there's nothing but Hispanic people. But he's a Hawaiian. It's so funny because he just deals with it all the time. He's got the best smile in the world. Biggest. I call him Colgate. Because he's got the Colgate smile. <laughs> just extra like, What's teeth. Up, Colgate? Just extra teeth. Just, just he smiles. and just like, Ding. you know, sweetest person in the world. Yeah. And he has to deal with it too. So all the time I'm always like, well, you know, I always say something to him, you know, like some kind of Spanish term, whatever. And he's always just laughing at me. That is crazy. I have a lot of buddies that were uh, like I think it's like a Poly- Polynesian. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. They always end up being labeled for everything. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny. All looped into some kind of like bucket. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like a. Well, I remember uh, I've always had uh, Hispanic people that have worked for me that uh, they speak Spanish, but like um, they've all been from different areas. So, yeah. um, like Venezuelan, um, their Spanish is, is pretty much pretty much yeah all over, but like. They, I remember I had an employee, uh, Johnny Gomez, if he's listening. So he uh, he listened to this uh, this couple talk, and they were speaking Spanish, but so fast I didn't think it sounded like Spanish. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, I don't know what they're <clears throat> what they're speaking. And I watched him go in there, and he's like, he's listening for a minute, figuring it out, and then he's like, oh, okay, all of a sudden. So he, then I think he figured out he like took him a company, he figured out where their where their dialect was uh-huh. from. Yeah. And he geared his fucking conversation to theirs. That's amazing. And I'm like, that's the type of shit that you can't put a uh you can't put a, an intelligence level on being able to speak bilingual. Right. Like Sergio said something funny to me when I asked him when I listened to the the recording, yes. I, go, I go, dude, how do people understand me? I talk so fast. He goes, No, like, we got it, man. Look. All of us the Venezuelans, we just know we just pick out words. <laughs> You'll say yeah. thirty words, we pick out the ones we need to hear. Right. I'm like, it I'm has ashamed. to, because I'll start a conversation and I'll just rapid fire it so fast. That's why a lot of like different uh, different cultures, like they'll just kind of look at me, but I talk with my hands. So <laughs> yes. like sometimes people will be like, I want to talk to you. I like, understand. Yeah, you got to get this. You know, I talk <laughs> with my hands. Like deaf people love me because I'm very animated. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm talking real loud to them, but yes. you know, I'm moving my hands and shit, but. It's crazy. I think I'd like to. I would like to learn Spanish and sign language. I think it'd be two things to really be cool. You know, Spanish and sign language. Oh yeah, or Spanish sign language. Yeah, Spanish yeah, sign. I think, language. I think it's, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> I don't grab it to the brewski. Anyone? C. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> he just held up a C. <laughs> oh man, I see. That's the thing. Like, I'm glad I don't have that trait of being able to just say like off the cuff like that because when i see people and they say crazy stuff i i'll f- tell you a funny story i i was delivering in this area 
in this these young kids probably you know like six or, or there's three or four of them mm-hmm. <clears throat> about 12 or 13 so you know 12 or 13 yeah. boys and they're like hey kanye and i just looked at him and i just started laughing because like at this point i'm you know everybody's got a ring camera everybody can record anything so i'm just like here and i'm leaving and they just start laughing laughing i just get in the truck and go like what what am i gonna do that and there's no win for that you know what i mean for me but if with you, you would have been like saying something. I don't know what it would have been great. Like I'm, you know, I just fucked your mom or something. Boy, there's a reason I would not be employed there anymore. Right? Yeah. You'd exactly. be telling this story on some other podcast, dude. Exactly. This guy, I heard a rumor. Yeah. Somebody. Well, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that comes to my head that I got. I got. Sometimes I got to grab and hold in. Yeah. Uh, but no, a lot of it comes right out. Right. Right. I mean, but it's a gift and a curse. It's, it is. It is. But it's very funny to. I mean, it's it's good for what you're doing as well too. Yeah. Well, I think I learned it honestly, man. I used to be uh, like a gamer. I was I was a younger cat. I was. I was like fat. I was fat when I was a younger kid. I was, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was like, uh, I didn't even really hit a growth spurt till later. Yeah. Um, like up until I was like a, like 12. I've maybe, seen like the, a, the yeah. picture of you with the stormtrooper in that hair. Why, why you got to bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest picture. The, you got it right there on deck, oh, don't right. you? No, it's in the other room. It's in the room. Uh, no, I used to have it up in here. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to remind me. How old um, were you in that picture? I think I might have been like freshman or sophomore year. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I went into freshman year like uh, like going, Adams, Adams. <clears throat> yeah, you know. but but the good thing is like I knew, like I knew enough people going in, <laughs> like because I, I I had learned to be really defensive on the joke scheme when I was like uh, like fifth That's grade. A great skill though. Well, you For... it's, it's it's it it is it is, but you have to it, it. If I were to say, would I have rather just been the dude that got to just twat Gross. chicks from freshman to senior year and everything yeah. else, you know? But different, like maybe if I didn't if I could skip, like if I just didn't have that. But then again, what would that... So I think you learn a lot of shit from... Because I used to walk in the room, man. Look at everyone in the room. I'd already have like... I'd build up jokes for every single person in the room That's just in crazy. case. But it was something I just started to learn. I just started to do. Yeah. Because I was like, again, short and fat, I'm not knocking this 6'2 cat that plays, you know... Yeah. You know I'm not... Yeah, I'm not just, it's not going to happen. I was like, well, I'm going to figure something else out, but... So just roasting them, huh? Oh, yeah. Right away, too. Like, just be ready to go. Ready to go. Just all the time. And then just... But it's not like I don't... At any point, were you were you on a roll with that? Were you ever a point where it's like, like I'm really good at this, yeah, and uh, I'm just continue like? Would you ever at a point where you do it in front of people or in front of a crowd or anything? So yeah, so there's a, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so like the the end game of that, if 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 you're if you're the like if you're the funniest person in your group, yes. Okay, um, oh, you got to be a stand up comedian. That job is so fucking hard oh i bet like that's like somebody somebody that's dumb as shit right <clears throat> but they're healthy as shit they run 90 miles a day couldn't do your job just because they're healthy mm-hmm. you have other stuff involved yeah. i can't i'm i can talk i can joke i can stuff but i, I can't you always remember feel like you have to be on do you always have to fight you have to be on Does um I mean that that brings up a good dynamic because I feel like that whenever time we used to hang out and stuff like that, I always felt like that it was always not a necessary burden, but it was always the type of that. But you were natural with it too. As yeah, well. it was. I, I, there, there's yeah. There, there, I I definitely have two answers to that. Yeah, you. That's when I'm good and everything else. It, it, it's it's normal. Like it's just that's just how I am. That's my personality. And again, it's not. I get a lot of that from mom too. She was clever with quips and fast stuff like really? that. So I yeah I was I always me and her were like. The same fucking human, like okay. identical. And my, my dad and brother were the same. My dad and brother were like the type. My my brother can build anything. He can fix yeah. his own truck. He can do all this. He'll do all his own manual labor. I'm more of I'm work my ass off in sales and pay somebody to do it. Okay. So like we're, we're kind of different spectrums, you know. Yes. Um. But yeah, there's the days when 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 I'm not in the mood to be the funniest person in the room. Yeah. Yeah, everybody runs away. So it is. It's one of those weird things where they can tell like my energy level, and it sucks. You know, it's not always. You know, it's not always easy to, if you're going through, you know, everybody goes through mental shit. So, yeah, so if, if I'm going through some shit and I can't, you know, you can't really tell your brain to stop thinking about it, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, my dad's health or, you know, what it, in the past and the work, whatever it was, you can't shut that part off. So when you go in somewhere and your energy's not not there, people do scatter more away from you, you know. So, okay. so you do, I mean, there's a level to it, but it, yeah. but it's weird. It's something that... uh yeah, it's almost like a superpower you learned, like, you know, from when, like, how do you get strong when you're in your weakest spot? Learn this task or whatever it was. So, but no, st- there there would not, I, I would not be able to be a stand-up comedian at all because <clears throat> they, like, because I tried, I thought about it and tried it. And I put, like, well, what would I say? Because you don't just walk up to a mic and you, 
my brain doesn't just spurt off funny things. It's not like I just have like a, like a button, like a valve. He presses a button, all of a sudden, skiddly dee dee. Mm-hmm. But you have to like Eddie, Eddie Griffith talks about. You ever heard him talk about? He never writes anything down. The genius of that. See, and that's it's that's somebody that if me and it's him were in the same room, they would be like, they look at me, and go, that guy is not funny because somebody like that is so intelligent and so right. clever they can do that. And like yeah. like a Dave Chappelle could walk in and just have a conversation with somebody and make it hilarious, mm-hmm. but. Stand up comedy is never going to be a thing for me because I can't. You have to have, you have to spend time re- remembering everything, <clears throat> all of your jokes. How does it land? You have to practice it. You have to do all that. And I couldn't put together a set. Or, you know what I mean? Like I could never, I would start writing stuff down and it wasn't authentic. It, it turns into scripted shit, you know? And it's weird. So, I mean, I, I praise people that are, that are stand up comics. Yeah. Because I can stand in front of, you know, as many people as it takes, and I can talk to people. You know, I don't have. Well, I don't, I mean, improv, improv would be. That's where it would be. Yeah, improv. so I could. Yeah, you know, improv would be like. I, I would. I would be phenomenal. If, like, whose line is anyway? Yeah. Oh, if that was my full time job, psh, hands down, that would be good. People yeah. are really impressive as well too, because then they can. <clears throat> there's not that script. You just go, and that would be really. That would be fun to see you do something. like That's that. like Keegan Michael Key. Like he. Like that's mm-hmm. if I could describe my comedy, it'd be him. Like because yeah. he can. He's so, like the Penn State when he was. You watched that oh show? Oh my he was, gosh, was dude! Hilarious. He's yeah. so. He looks so, just like him. And he looks just like him. He he, he can change everything about yep. his eyes, the way yep. he breathes. Like he's yep. so good. He's yeah. so good at being like develop that character. Yeah. And they just they just do it. Yeah. So yeah, that that would be fun. Fuck mm-hmm. hell yeah! Like if it, like I did that in uh, in high school. I did a little bit of drama. Uh, I only took drama because um, it was easy. You know, um, it was like <laughs> an easy class. Like. Uh, it was funny because uh, my buddy uh, well, Pat Austin, he came in, he, he walks into class. He didn't have a class. Like, like Adams was not really organized, we'll say. Uh huh. He was supposed to be in a different class. He just took drama. But, but, he, but he goes, I'm in here. <laughs> His name is Patrick Austin. Yeah. He walks in. Uh, what's your name? He's like, Pat Austin. He goes, Teacher goes, L A W S O N. He goes, Yep. So he was Pat Lawson for a year. He was Pat Lawson for a year and got credit what? for the class. Yeah. So oh I called him gosh. Lawson for the longest time because yeah. he was L A W S O N. He was like, "Yep." I go, "Pat, <laughs> I go tell oh your name's gosh. Lawson." But it was it was fun, man. Like we would do some weird shit and drama. Like they would. Uh, there was this dude that was uh, an army singer. This black dude went to M. Like I used to love to. I was in choir and shit. Like back in eighth grade, and that this dude could sing like a champ. Uh-huh. And he would always sing the same type of song, like a uh, shy or boys oh, to men and yeah. stuff. Walk down the halls. I would try to sing. It didn't sound like him. You know, but, yeah. Uh, but he he was in my class, and we we did this random ass thing. We were supposed to. Um, I was a research assistant, <clears throat> and he was the uh, head uh, biologist or whatever. And I yes. had to inform him that I found a, a germ. I go, this new germ could kill millions of people. And he was also like a like a dancer, and I was also. I mean, I wouldn't, you know. I'm real athletic, but I, I could dance like a champ. So we we somehow turned this into a weird dance with a chair in front of us. <laughs> I don't know how we did it. This is all spur of the moment. Like I grabbed the chair, I stood up in the chair, and I, I kind of kicked the chair towards him. And then he sat on. He goes, "What do you mean, germ?" And then he spun the chair through it at me. And, I, and then as it came to me, I sat down. I go, "I mean, it's going to kill everybody." He goes, "What do you mean?" So I spun the chair, threw it back, and like it was fun as shit. It was like the most fun we ever had. Yeah. And the teacher was just. He was like loving. He's like Kyle. Why don't you do that type of shit? Like he was so happy because I was always a bad kid. But he was. It was just the most. I bet fun your shit. teacher loved you for that stuff. No, dude, I was. No? A, I was a for the shit I did the, to get a good grade. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was great at this, but I was also. Yeah. A, I was also the you know the kid that sent people to sneak out in the roof, grab <laughs> snowballs, and throw them in. No, we did a lot of shit. We got a we have a whole we got a whole play canceled because of me and Pat. He was. You got a whole play canceled. When you, I mean, when when you say it back at me with those judging eyes, it makes me feel. <laughs> That's impressive. Yes. No, That's impressive. It's bad. <laughs> Me and Pat were because we'd clown so much. But and can you ever? You can't turn it off, can you? No, when I'm sad, it doesn't show up. So it's not a turn off. But like if I'm like having a rough day or something, like you know, it it, it it's somewhere else. Yeah. So uh, there's there's times where I could be a huge fucking dickhead, and I try to stay <clears> away from people. But it's mostly when it was all work related. Like, how would you? Okay, so with that, how would you balance out? Your work life with, you know, <clears throat> stuff like that. If something was shitty and going on with your life to keep that away from your work. Because I remember you with me at Best Buy. I was having a, you know, a rough time with my oldest. Like some, you know, some drama, yeah, stuff yeah. going like that. And you took me aside and were like, look, you got to, you got to lock this up. Like you got to realize when you're here, this is, what, I mean, how are you able to completely keep that always going? You know, um, wasn't. Yeah. I was for a lot of years. 
like everybody. I was for a lot. I was able to be mentally handle that type of shit. You know, and I'm not saying I've been through a lot or yeah. I've never had to fight a bunch of adversity or anything. It wasn't that I had to like fight through like that type of stuff, but it got to the point where like at like the end of my that's why I quit. That's why I left Team Mobile. I was like, uh, I got to the point where I couldn't. I couldn't, and I was a fucking dick. Like I'm talking, there was days where I would be outside of my body looking at myself being somebody else like i'm talking like nobody would even recognize like really it was i was like i was like a fucking like a like a bitch face like a bitch face you just hate, because you're just over it it was there was too much shit put on one person that, that you, you weren't you couldn't get all of it done okay and you couldn't make money because you were spending time doing something that didn't need to be done it was a i don't know it's like you have one oar and you're in a paddle boat and you're, you're circling just circles yeah, yeah. so it, was, it wasn't profitable because it wasn't productive. Like, that's one of my biggest quotes. If it's not productive, it is not profitable. And I... I if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Yeah, goddamn right. But no, I'm serious. If, if if What am I doing it for? If the outcome is not income, what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh-huh. You know, and I'm really a, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. I mean, I turned that little ass fucking Sprint store that had 800 customers a month to now seeing 4,000 a month. And it's the, like, third biggest in Indiana, you 4, know? 4,000 a month? Yeah. And that's that's... After pand- before pandemic, 7,000, 6,800 to 7,000 people a month, every month. Yeah, I don't want to bash the company because I was there for oh, a long of course. time. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know, mean, every company's got their issues. Yeah. I mean, I could sit up here and tell you a billion things as well, too. But it's just, it is what it is. You yeah. Know? It's one of the things you got to, I mean, it's one of the things, it's weird. It's weird. Like, um, it was a quote from Jordan, man. He goes, when I lose, you know, when he loses passion for the game, he's he's going to retire. And that was one of the things, man, like, like for retail, I was like, I... I lost all passion and it wasn't, you know, just the fact that, uh, that like the pandemic happened and customers became different assholes, but like, but they did. So did you, okay, let's talk about that. Look, were you, were you dealing with people that were scared? Were you dealing with people that were just angry? How, cause I can, when you finish telling, I'll tell you mine, but like, how was it? Like, were you dealing with, well, we were, we were open all the time. We were essential because we were, we were yes. service repair center. Yes. So uh, right away it was easy, man. I'll tell you what, that was the easiest March of what March of uh, like March, mid March, March 20th, whatever, 2020 yeah. uh-huh. when the world shut down. Yes. It was easy for us. Cause we set up a thing. We'll meet you at your car. And it was easy for me as at that, at the, for, for, for probably like, th- that was probably, probably, probably three to three to six months. Where it was, you could only be outside and all these crazy, it was, it was nice to be a manager at that point because I could just tell my employees, hey, go check in, see what they need. They're not, you know, we couldn't sell stuff, but if you need your phone fixed. So we just played games and occupied our time. But when they like released the dam and yeah, you get people coming in, man. So COVID made, COVID gave people too much free time. Okay. And unfortunately we live in a country that. When well, people sit have on a computer and order stuff and I come deliver. When when people have too much free time and 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 unlimited access to information, it's a ba- it's it's a bad scenario. I mean, yeah. and I've, all the shit that happened during quarantine, not only just the just just the pandemic. I mean, there was the pandemic. They released the alien shit. Yep. They had. Um, I mean, the Breonna Taylor happened, oh, and yeah. then I mean, I'm ta- it, it flew all together. Then, then the George Floyd, like it was yeah. the most biggest. The biggest <clears throat> things happened because everybody only got to watch it. Yeah, you know, because a lot of that shit has been happening for years and years. It just yeah. wasn't so televised, or it was, but you got to miss it because you were doing your nine to five. Yeah. So I think that it brought out a lot of racial tension for sure. Yeah. Um, but, but that was less of, of us thing. Cause we're, we're team, we had, you know, we're very diverse clientele. So that was never a problem. It is more of the people that would just have the wrong information. You know, I don't want to say everybody was a conspiracy theorist, but when you have the wrong information, you come in and you, and you start to cause a scene. It's like, look, you're just not, you know, you're not properly informed. And because of that, I have to go through a battle or one of my employees do. So yeah, there's a lot of that bullshit. Um, but it was, I mean, it was, it was manageable. It was a tough time for retail, man. Yeah. So yeah. So no, the, 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 the Kyle that you know was not a part of that company for the past six months. Wow. I saw the fear in people. That was my biggest thing was the absolute fear manifest itself in people that have never taken care of themselves, never did anything to help themselves would just boil over. I remember I would go to a, like an apartment building 
And I don't know, for some reason, people love to answer the door, still even in a pandemic, even in March. But the problem was they were pulling, putting on full PPE <laughs> before I answered the door. Like, I rang the doorbell one time, and this lady was like, oh, just a second. And I can hear her like, more than her voice, but she's putting on a mask, right? <laughs> and it was like a fucking full hazmat suit <laughs> with the green gloves. Just pop, sh- pop. Answers the door. I'm like, ma'am. I don't want to really talk to you. I can just sit this down right here. Okay. And she picks it up like this and then sure with the Lysol. You know, now that, that was the best part it was about is I'd sit stuff down, people would <laughs> hear it down like Lysol must have made a killing. And couldn't even buy it. It was it out couldn't of stock. Even buy it. Yeah. And then toilet paper. Toilet paper. I delivered toilet paper like it was going out of style as well, too, because it really was. People were buying it all up. Um the the fear came to the most was the the people with the with all that protection and then um i remember ringing doorbells and people like for signature packages they would like close the curtains i'm like banging on their window i just need to see you just your face like i don't want to talk to you i'm gonna sit it right here come to the window just literally show me your face and he'd be like and i'd be like okay good enough and i'd sit it down i'm walking away now this is me farther away, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I'm getting into my truck. I'm leaving, you know, because you were I was yeah. literally the walking plague. Like anytime I walked up to summer, somebody would like grab their kids or, you know, like, you know, if people or, you know, would be walk the streets because, yeah. of course, you know, they wanted to still stay outside. If I came, the, you know, on the truck, you know, they would go on the other side or, you know, they'd stay away. And I totally understand it because. Right. And there'd be. Times, That's what they were told to do. Yeah. 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 There'd be times like during that as, as that well where I would get like a random sore throat. Or it'd go away, you know, and, it, and I would get a stuffy nose or I'd get a cough. And I have terrible seasonal allergies. And that's a worst time to oh, ever get you when you have like to that. say every cough, allergy cough, uh-huh. allergy cough. I have yes, allergies. Yes, that's... And I, I'm I'm coughing because I have allergies. Do the, yeah, I'm, yeah. And people give you that look like, oh my gosh, if you feel that and you sneeze coming on an elevator or something, it was, yeah, it was terrible. You just got a... <laughs> in, in, inward sneeze. <laughs> yeah, as it's coming at your butt. Yes. <sighs> There's like you're saying too much information. There was you couldn't digest everything. You couldn't really form your own opinion because by the time you read everything, something was changing, or this left wing, right wing, whoever would have their own agenda. So what could you really believe? I never. I just would try to just turn all that stuff off and just try to focus on my family. That's what I tried to mm-hmm. do because I had friends with work that would always just spend all their time, you know. Reading all the stuff. Oh, did you hear about this? Or, yeah. Oh, did you hear about that? And it's just would be terrible. And, you know, they would end up driving a lot of them, you know, crazy. Because they would just consume too much yeah. of it. And then... And for what? And also, nobody, nobody uses trust the source. Yeah. Nobody ever uses that. And it's it's bananas. Like, literally, I've never in my life um, heard any more. Like, is it consp- I know people always have conspiracy theories. Yeah. Um, well, it's even going on right now with the whole Russia and um, Ukraine thing. Like, every time I put on, like, open the news app, it's always Russia's trying to, um, you know, test some kind of new ballistic missile or we're doing this. Like, it's just, it's just fear. Well, it's all just, also, it's all just clickbait. Like, mm-hmm. because now, now news, news, news companies understand that, like, nobody's going to believe anything I say. Right. You know, and, and I do, you know, like, I'm, I'm a person like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go like go on, on a political tangent or anything like I've never voted because I don't, um, I don't, I, I am not educated enough to make that decision. Yeah. But like now it's like 60 to 80 is our average president's age. So, yeah. so, so. Um, Isn't that amazing? It's, it's, it's dumb. It doesn't, make, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like it, it drives me nuts because like 300, I 300, almost 400 million people in this country and all we can do is to Two almost, you know, octogenarians. Our you know, president like, turned and shook no one's hand and walked the wrong way <laughs> off of stage. I don't. It's so hard to be a part of a country. And again, I can't sink his. Maybe he was the right person, but yeah. no, there's got to be a level yeah. where, like, yeah. I understand the president is is not. Even though you're the president, it's not like you get to go. All right, check it out, Senate. We're doing this tomorrow. They're gonna uh-huh. be like, no, we're not. Right. So it's not like they have, you know, a bunch, but just, just, just be a. Like like Obama was the best. Like I don't know. I don't know anything about his politics. I do not yeah, know. I will. I will sit here and tell you. I do not know. Um, but he, he the way he t- his the way he would speak, speak. the way he could grab speak. people's attention, yep. mm-hmm. and he didn't look like he was about to die. Okay, <laughs> I 
I'm, it's, it's, you know, again, I'm not Democrat, Republican, whatever it yeah. is. Um, whatever it is, all I know is our president cannot stand up. All right. And then turn, shake no one's hand. <laughs> right. There was nobody there. Do you see that video? Uh, yes. He shook no yeah. one's hand and then turns around and goes the wrong way. Yes. And then a week before... His secret service are walking the yard, and like he he leaves. Yep. He's been doing it. He leaves like his his little whatever the area they have the outside press conference. He walks uh-huh. over, and you go inside. You go, hey, uh, you're gonna go here, and you're gonna go only only the path you follow the cement sidewalk. It'll take you inside. He wanders off the sidewalk. Yeah. He's in he's in he's in the backyard of the White House, looking around. Yeah. Security's yeah. trying not to be caught on camera. Going, hey, Mark, look at look at look at look at look at yeah, look at look at him. Yeah. He's doing snow angels in the grass. <laughs> 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 A lot of it just doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I don't vote. You know, I don't. I'm a logical person. Yeah. Okay. Um, stats matter. Yeah. Mostly because I'm a LeBron fan. So yes. all I deal with is mostly hate from everybody in it's the world. A, I don't... I, that's not... We'll get there. Why, we can... I, because, why because, because, because greatness? No, it's because... Why? It's because he said out loud that I'm taking my talents to South Beach. Why hate greatness? I don't get it. He's, don't get it. he's not Michael Jordan. Okay, that's fine. Understandably. Don't hate him. Just enjoy the greatness. That's that's a, that's the quote that's crazy is that is, is is that I'm not saying he's better than Michael. I'm just saying enjoy. He's, the I mean, he can't be. There, there's a, there, there's a difference. I get. But don't hate him though. The the problem is it's so easy to hate anything comparable to somebody else that's good. Everybody only hates. Haters are only going to hate good shit. Yeah. Have you had any negative feedback with this? Excuse me. I've had conversations. Um, I live by a philosophy. Trust the source. I always trust the source. I always trust the source. Um, you're going to get information thrown at you all the time. So yeah. best thing you do is trust the source and throw it away. It's weird. It's like, just just keep doing I don't know. It's weird. Just, just keep doing whatever you do that makes you happy. I feel like if, if you're passionate about something and you're happy about it and you're, if you're throwing your whole heart into, into, into whatever you're doing... Just keep fucking doing it, man. There's gonna be people yeah. that are gonna hate. There's gonna be people that are gonna say shit, but <clears throat> but also you have to. You have to though. You have to listen to criticism. I mean, uh, the first three podcasts I wrote down notes. Like I had surgical. What else, man? What else you think could have been different? What else? Because you have to be able to take constructive criticism, and that's another thing I was never good at. You know, I guess sometimes it does. It does. It does, it does depend on who the source is, because some people. Some people say shit because out of pure jealousy. Like when you're doing your best, they'll try to make something up because they can't handle somebody else's shine. Yeah. You know, you know, and uh, but that's the truth of everything in life. And I think you you know people like everybody knows that 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 type of person. Yeah. You know, so it's not that I'm like it's not that I got like nine million followers and like and I and I have time to read comments. All my comments come from people I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, if it gets to the point where it gets crazy, um if it gets to the point where I have so many people that I have to look at all the comments, and that means that I probably won't look at the comments. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, that just means I mean, more people listening too. Though, bingo. Too. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so you're once more people listen, it's gonna open up. And this might be, you know, a year, two years. I can look at some of these cats. They're like celebrities that have been doing podcasts for their third year, and they finally got five thousand people liking a video or something. Yeah, and it's like, damn. So, I mean, I've got. I haven't looked at the numbers the past two days, but like over. I think it's over like 2,800 total streams. That's just wow. Spotify. Like, that's pretty cool. That's not you even know? including Apple, right? No, Apple, Google, Buzzsprout. It's, it's on all of them. Apple, oh, it's Google, all Buzzsprout, that? Amazon. Yeah, all, I don't know how to like... Some of those what, are 2,800? Yeah, 2,800. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's streams. It says that, that somebody had spent more than 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. the... Yeah, so... Is there, is there a person out there that would be like your whale? Somebody like... I don't know if it can be famous. Oh, Dan Cook, famous. Dan Cook, Dan, Dan Cook. Cook. I have I have emailed and uh, sent him direct messages on. I'm talking Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. All Every time dudes. he goes live on Snapchat, I keep posting the same video Dan, until they Dan, tell me Dan, I have Dan, to wait. Dan, 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 hey, it's me, it's Kyle. I've Come tried, on, Kyle. It's you know, because you know he had the same thing. Like you know, he, he lost both of his parents within a year, and he was at the peak of his career, and then both of his parents died within a year of cancer, and like losing a losing a you know losing a parent was tough, and you know I went through the same thing. And like, uh, you know, I had a good story. So eventually, hopefully, yeah, you know, that'd be awesome. I'd love to talk to him. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, I mean, in a perfect fucking world, I'd like to have fucking uh, in a row. I mean, give me a, give me a LeBron. I would like Nas, Jay Z, <laughs> um, Anna Kornikova, but that's a different episode. Yes, we're gonna throw that one aside. Uh, give me Taylor, Swift, different episode. Uh, matter of fact, just give them both in the same episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, yeah, I'd love one to, mic, one mic only. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to sit. Ah, uh, sit across to somebody like a. 
man, I would love to. I would fucking love to talk. I mean, to, to LeBron. Hell yeah, I mean, I'd love to even see him as a person. I, I'd probably just touch him. Gotcha. Sorry. But see, here's the thing, though. Okay, so you meet this person, you have him on your podcast. What the fuck are you gonna ask him that he hasn't already been asked a thousand, hundred, million, oh, fifty, eleven times? Yeah, I know. I don't know. I probably honestly, right? I'd probably go like this. Uh, I'd probably just make a noise and stare uh, at him. I would just slowly just take my shirt off. Real? I don't even know. It's are look- you real? Like, uh, you're playing with your nipples, Kyle. It's been a like, sweaty ooh. black man I've been watching for thirteen fucking years, every single day of my life. So I don't know what I, he's like. My what, he's exactly. been like my. Uh, you would my, have to my role model, like my motivation for you. I don't know what I would say to him. I'd be like, you, you're a good dude. Yeah, you help me through some shit. Tall. Do you wanna dunk? Do you wanna dunk me? I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got so I some know. donuts. You want to dog him? Dog Same him, thing with Jordan, donuts. man. Like Jordan was like, man, like you, like as a kid, I was like drawn. Like I, he, like Jordan was like an, an icon. Yeah, like he was. Uh, he changed the game of basketball for me. Like it was bananas. So I'll never be able to. There will no, never be able to anybody top what Jordan did for. Yeah, like me and our culture at the same time. I mean, they like like they shut down TGI Fry, like TGIF. Like you didn't get to watch Step by Step, Family Matters because you know the Bulls were playing uh, the Pacers. Yeah, you know it's Reggie versus Jordan, like. It happened, and it was such a, an iconic movement. So I'd be I'd, Jordan as well. But yeah, I don't know what I would ask him. Now here's the thing: I think they would be. This is crazy. Maybe this. Um, I think they'd be terrible interviews at this juncture in their life because they've literally done everything. They've done it all. The only way we would have to come up with some obscure story, something they've never told anybody, but you're gonna hardly get that out of them. I think it'd be more interesting to interview like a, like a John ja Morant or somebody that's new, somebody that's unbecoming, that's somebody like you Anthony know, Thomas Ant Man. Yeah, somebody who who doesn't who hasn't quite been through the ringer. Because I mean, obviously, it would be cool to have Jordan. I'm sure he would. You know, it would you know boost your numbers. And, you know, I would want LeBron over Jordan. Though. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, but to just again, to talk to. then yeah, how do you relate or how do you come up formulate questions? For somebody on that type of level, I would. I don't know. You know, I mean, if if if, if it was a yeah, I, I know that I would spend every single minute trying to figure it out un, until until that date came to put together. I'd have just charts, yarn everywhere. But All right, I think so I'm glad you'd be you, good enough. I think you'd be good enough to where you just would find you know something. I would just want to ask him questions that I had questions for him. Yeah, you know, um, big three man against Detroit. Yeah, he dropped forty five and two. That game I watched, I, I smoked a whole pack of cigarettes um, back when I used to smoke. Uh, it's the craziest game ever. How long have you been smoke free? Oh, so long. I don't even know. Uh, Since 11, last time I saw you. 11, 12 years. Something like that. Years. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, it's been, uh, I remember I hit my 10 year and I kind of stopped tracking it at that yeah. point. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if cigarettes didn't kill you, I would smoke cigarettes every day, all day. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes you, it gives you energy. Uh, makes you False. poop if you need to. Uh, you You could smoke. At 8 p.m., if you need to go to bed at 8.30, you're good. It awesome. gives you just enough, all of those true things. I smoked for a long time, and I, I used to be able to balance my life around smoking. Do the two-minute smoke you break. Poop? Oh, my It'll God. you poop? Are you kidding me? Nah, I, I... Dude, so you wake... This thing called coffee and cigarettes. When you I wake love in the coffee. morning... I do love coffee. Love It's coffee. diuretic. It makes you shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of force it out. Yes. Same thing. So think about this. So if I'm smoking... I'm putting into my body an amount of smoke that I'll eventually blow out, but it pushes and some whatever it does to your body is it it makes you it makes you it gives you it has it has like nicotine so it gives you it gives you a rush it gives you a, it feels like a, it feels like a cup of coffee, but it's quicker faster and you don't need to I don't I don't sweat from it and even after however however long you've smoked you still get a, like a rush from it. Well, I don't smoke anymore. So. Well, I'm sorry. If I were to, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Back, back in the day, though, when you were smoking out or when your heyday. Um. Oh yeah. When still... you get, man, when you get tired at work, burn one. You get energy for another hour. When you get, you know, yeah. When you just, when you just, when you just, when you want to eat, like. It, it, See, it, I tried it, smoking, but I was always like trying to be the. Yeah, idiot, but, cool but you don't. You don't have. Well, to me, you don't have an addictive personality, uh, so I don't. But but but. Uh, you, 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 you might you might, but you're able to. Find I it. love chips. Chip whore. Shut your mouth. You're talking chip, about chips. Chip whore. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm telling you what. I don't tell anybody this, but let's check it out. Sometimes I like my to have w- chips. My <laughs> wife would tell you that I'm a chip whore. Like, literally, if there's a... I will, like, fat kid shame eat in the corner some chips. So like, what do you mean? What's your favorite? Like, what do you... Because I know, I know oh, chips. It's I, a big tortilla genre. Tortilla chips, like these chips. You know what I mean? Like, in chips and salsa, I, I will get home from work, and I will open a thing of salsa, and I will just... <laughs> And until it's too stop. deep until yeah until you're knuckling it yeah, and you're just yeah. like fuck then this like, then you put it on the plate and, and you eat the rest horrible and i feel terrible and then i go upstairs and go to bed 
That's not too bad, Dub. Eh, it could be worse. Yeah. Yeah, well, it could be way worse. I remember yeah. when I was stayed with my ex, uh, she wouldn't ever let me eat anything because um, I ran out of money because she spent it all. <laughs> so uh, I came up one time, she actually, literally her and her sister, uh, she was living with us at the time, uh, they ordered dine-in. And back in the day, dine-in, this is way before DoorDash. Dine-in yeah. was like, you're 40 bucks, one meal. That's the only way you're getting it. Like delivery fee was like twelve ninety nine. dollars you're going to pay a $10 tip. If you wanted somebody to bring you food, you know, back in like, you know, 15 years ago uh-huh. that was the plan so so i come home and this is after like a best buy day like i was working so much at best buy like i'd get home i was like she's like oh we got uh, we ordered dining I'm like oh man she uh ordered me some food like you know awesome you know yeah. finally you know something she goes oh no we ate most of it there's still a biscuit left <laughs> and i go i just looked around the room like so there's so you, you both had all all of it all of it <laughs> all right I'll see you in the morning. I just left, went to the bar. I was like, done. Yeah. Uh, Lord, we'd like to give you Takashi. We'd like uh, Michael Jackson back. Oh, I don't. Uh, uh, oh, uh, don't. Uh, maybe, just, maybe I his, know. His I understand. Listen. Maybe his music. Maybe his music. He has never been proven ever. I, I Beyond understand. a shadow I love of him. doubt okay. by a jury. I love the music. And he I has love never it. been proven to ever touch a child. <laughs> Not of all of the court dates. Yeah, he did hang his child named Blanket outside of a two-story sure balcony did. to show sure everybody. Did. You see, Blanket, remember that? Thing? <laughs> yes, I remember. I was like, what are you doing? Just, that's your that's a brand new child. Yeah. You can't yeah. wrap him in a blanket and then hang yeah. Blanket outside of a balcony. Oh, my gosh. His music was so good. I, 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 I remember the song Jam. I mean, I, all of it. Thriller, all of it. Just, just slapped. All of it did. Dude, I got through uh, kindergarten. My teacher goes, Kyle, if, because I used to love dancing, Michael Jackson, I had a hat. Like, eh, yeah. Eh, eh, she goes, uh, if you just, if you just stop causing a scene, I'll let you <laughs> dance like Michael Jackson at the end of the class. And then my other buddy Rex. Yeah, how, how was your kindergarten? I'm, I'm sure it was. Well, it was a Michael Jackson dance off in the class. So, uh, <laughs> every day. Every fucking every time day. I won, too, because I'd be in there, be like, ski, <laughs> do, ah, ah, don't, don't move. I got the flip, had the hat flip, roll it down your arm, put it on your head. He wasn't ready for that. So, oh. The first grade teacher didn't understand that. So, <laughs> oh, I bet a lot of your, your report cards in school were, <laughs> you know, a pleasure to have in class. Loves to talk. Shows so shows much potential. What, what, what do they say? Yeah, potential. Shows so, so much potential. My parents have seen the word shows so much potential on all of my shit. So, yeah, we, we get it. He's not going to. I hope he stops, but mm-hmm. he just won't. He just, he just talks all the time. It's, so my, my kid, my nine-year-old, all the time, he just nonstop talks. Like, just will literally. He just loves to hear himself talk. He'll talk, 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 talk. And I'll be like, buddy, you, you talk a lot. He go, Or you ask a lot of questions. He goes, well, I'm a curious guy. Yeah, yeah, which is which is fair, you know. I'm like, okay, that's fair. But literally, he was just he'll, and he'll ask questions, and I'll find myself when I remember when I was his age, just asking him same dumbass questions, like just to talk, just mm-hmm. to say stuff. And I'm like, buddy, you're just talking to talk. You know, just like, oh yeah, you're right. You start hitting him with some weird ass good quotes, but like, listen, life can't Nietzsche. take it down that journey, but you can always drink somebody else's lemonade. <laughs> And just walk away. I think they'll just sit there for like four hours going. Dun, mic drop. What was the uh, what was the worst job you ever had? <laughs> worst job. Oof! Wow, worst job. Oh, I got it. Manufacturing eyeglasses for for lens crafters. Hold I on. was fucking. How the fuck did you get into that? Okay, first off, my buddy, my <laughs> buddy worked with me at Man Alive. He yeah. was like an associate manager, not like. Like bottom of middle management, right? And he like an associate lens- degree. Mm-hmm. Yes, he went- <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. He-, <laughs> he put a couple exactly. years in, but <laughs> exactly that was that was spot on. He um, worked. He was uh, like the manager there at Landscraft. He's like, oh yeah, you should come over here. You'll be great at it. I was terrible. <laughs> so were you, were you, are so you fabricating gross. lenses? Yes. yes. So with no oh, experience, geez. you're just you're trying to carve out glass. <laughs> So no, it was not quite. I mean, there was fail safes, but I screwed it all up. It was so bad. I mean, and, and they were so nice about it to me. They were like, you know what? This is just not working out. I'm a like, lot of people don't right. do well at this job. <laughs> Everyone else has done well, but a lot of, a lot of maybe it's just you. <laughs> it's just you. That's exactly what it was. I was so bad. They had like tracked. 
how many times you broke package, <laughs> like broke. The, and you the were on the list, the list. top of the list, <laughs> top of the list, like in the red, just, like butt of the elf. Yes. You're, look, you're too big. You yes. got to go do something else. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. It was I was so bad at it, and they were so nice to me because they're like, "Well, you're just not doing a good job," and they gave me so um, so many opportunities. And I just screwed it all up. I, mean, I I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. I'm not a mechanical person. Like I don't. I can't. I'm not a carpenter. I, you yeah, know, I don't I'm build, not fixing shit. Yeah. Right. I mean, I try. My mother-in-law is phenomenal with. Like, she's like Bob Vila mis, uh, mixed with uh, Betty Crocker. Damn. Yeah. She's she's great. You know, and she's shown me so many things. You know, so many things. But when it came to lens crafters, I just I shit the bed. Like diarrhea, diarrhea stains all did over. You, the place. Did you get fired? No, they didn't fire me. They, they, I resigned, and they were thankful. Did they go? I think maybe tomorrow today you should. <laughs> you resign. You should tell us that you don't yes, really want to. Yes. Yeah, they couldn't talk yes, to you. Exactly how it went. Exactly. They're like, we can't fire you, but we would really like for you to resign. We're wondering if you have any other <laughs> options that you'd like to explore. If there's another place that you would tell us that you're putting your two weeks in, we won't be mad. We <laughs> put a padlock on your locker. You no longer get to use it. So could you figure out how to find somewhere else? <laughs> could you just... The nicest way. Hey, other people here uh, <laughs> voted. <laughs> we're gonna go. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go. No, you. You're, okay. You're, you're gonna try to punch in, and it's not gonna work. So please just leave. No, nothing here. There's nothing here for you. There's nothing. <laughs> I was. I must have costed that company like thousands of dollars because uh, I just yeah. could not figure. Oh, nice it out. job, Jason. Broke another pair, huh? <laughs> nice yeah. Good exactly. job, Marty. Tell him to get you hired. Did your buddy get fired after that too? I mean, no, but he was so embarrassed. <laughs> I yeah, my bad. bad I, he seemed like a smarter cat. I didn't know he'd fuck up so much <laughs> shit. I didn't know. Yeah, it was it was bad. It was real. I was and that was over in the height of the anxiety with the you know the bad relationship and the, all the Burger King all all that was right there with that too too. What's the uh, what's the best purchase you've ever made? <sighs> my house. This this house I'm in right now. Yeah, yeah, that's the most proud I've ever been. Nice for sure. The yeah. first house you ever bought? Second house, second house we bought. But it was this is like this is like the family home. Yeah, you know, like like your forever home. Yeah, yeah, and like the whole. You can sack, raise the kids. The kids are in, in a good neighborhood. Uh, it's a great neighborhood. The kids play with all you know the neighborhood kid, kids. Um, love it. Yeah, it's it's that's where we built our home gym. You nice. know, it's where, you know, it's, it's it. That's it. What's your worst purchase you ever made? Worst purchase? Probably uh, an 89 Ford Mustang 5.0 that was a convertible that I had to duct tape the, um. Oh, what a great the, car. Before you said duct tape was such a great car. Yeah, 5.0 it was. Yeah. Was a real I was car. so excited to get this car and the guy who sold it to me totally got me. <laughs> Because I wasn't looking for it. It was a project car. Like yeah. somebody who knew how to work on cars would, would love this car. I'm not that. I just wanted the the five liter stick You shift. saw 5.0. I, yeah. You're like, I want to burn these tires. I, yeah, on. yeah. And he was like, and <clears throat> I bought it, right? I gave this man a check, you know, for $4,000. And I went to start it and didn't even start. <laughs> didn't even start. He's like, oh, oh, oh. He goes, oh. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're dancing in front of you. <laughs> Got your check. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, whoa, it's not even starting. He's like, oh, well, I'll jump it for you. Got it <laughs> jumped. Had it. Yeah, I, I bought it for four and ended up putting at least two or three into it just to get it going. Just to sell it? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Good lesson learned. Good lesson yeah. learned. All right, was, so, go ahead. No, no, no. So I, I, I want to do something that um, I got a thing. Uh, like you called explain that post. Oh Lord. So yeah, you're damn oh, right. So, yeah, you're Jesus. damn right, Jason Walker. Oh, I dug God. in deep. Um July seventh, two thousand ten. Oh no. So seriously, think about this. Oh no. No, no. I'm proud. If LeBron leaves Cleveland, it may just turn into a third world country. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure on a twenty five year old shoulders. Now, you said that before he said, apparently, the worst statement the world has heard, I'm taking my talents to, to South, South Beach. Beach. Who would have thought that would be worse than anything else? Like Trump saying he'd grab a woman by the vagina. 
Uh, who would have thought that statement would make someone hate a human being more than anything else? That's true. But I, I was just, it was a fun fact. I was digging through it. I was like, wait a minute, did he say something nice about LeBron? Let me look at that. And that was before he made that decision. Yeah. Bananas. Third world country. It, and you know what's funny is that um, it, it became that way. <laughs> like a lot of places had to close up shop. Because yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to Cleveland before, but it's, it's kind of where Never. you go. I don't want everyone to go. No, it's like where you want to go. Like if you ever like ready to like to just kind of like die. That's where you go. That's where you go. Like you're like, hey, I'd like to see nothing but sadness all day. I'd like Let's to go see. To Cleveland. I'd like to see a bunch of people sad uh, that are sad, and then the weather also is always sad. I'd like to. I'd like to take Indiana weather and make it worse. Their lake caught on fire. Lake Erie. <laughs> lake Erie get, they caught on they don't get fire. Lake, they don't get lake effect snow. They get lake effect lake fire. fire. <laughs> it caught on fire. How do you catch a and lake that on is fire? Crazy. There's no oil spilled. How does a lake catch it, on fire? It caught on. Fire. I don't know. You can't spell Cleveland. sandwich without a six. That's that's <laughs> nothing. That's not even a thing. So what would you tell to somebody that was uh, a new parent? What's Buckle the, what up. You... Buckle up. I mean, it's, it's, it's the greatest ride that you're not ready for ever. And you just learn on the fly. And there's, there's no, there's no manual. You just have to just just take everything one day at a time. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. There's there's nothing that prepares you for three in the morning, kids puking and shitting everywhere, and you gotta play that game of well, it's your turn. Oh, it's your turn. You know, it's it's that. It's you learn a lot about yourself and your marriage at three in the morning when the kid's not sleeping and screaming and puking and shitting and whatever and crying. Is that when you really found out like your relationship is strongest when you guys can, how do you, how do you balance that? I, I mean, it's, there's a lot of dark times with that too. I'm not saying it's all peaches, you know. Well, but you just described changing shitty I, diapers. It, so I don't, I didn't think well, that. I mean, it's peaches. just, it's you sleep deprivation is a real thing. And when you're used to sleeping and something comes along and just interrupts that it changes your whole dynamic and you become a cohesive unit, you know, to where it's, Okay, it's your turn to do this, or it's your turn to do this, you know. And she, my wife, a million times knew that I'd be up early in the morning, and she would take, you know, to and not complain and do it. And you know, and I, I, I'm not saying I took it for granted, but I needed to be better about saying thank you. You know, that's that's really what it comes down to. So, do you want to take the time to tell tell your wife thank you for, thank you, honey, I love you. I was more saying allowing you to be in my probably, house. With she probably won't even listen to this. I'll make her listen. I've been messaging her all day. I was like, listen, listen. We're going to say weird stuff. Don't blame it on him. It's probably my fault. Right, right. <laughs> However, if I don't give a shout out to my wife, Brandy, my old, uh, my, or my middle child, Mr. Landon, and Harrison and Carson, she'll, they'll, they will be very upset. They will love to hear their names. That's good. That's a good shout out. Yeah. No, I mean, before we end, I got, you know, obviously I always like to have a good shout out, but I will uh, end with one question. You got three wishes and you can't wish for more fucking wishes. We're past that. You got three wishes. What do you got? <sighs> three wishes, huh? I mean, Is it is it too weird to say the cliche of everybody love each other? Wish I, for I'm not that? I'm not the genie, so yeah, you have yeah. to. Yeah, I don't know. I wish yeah, I could I help mean, you with this one, but <laughs> you're, dude, you you got a gun to your head. I guess think yeah, about yeah. it. Think about it. you got three wishes. You got to do it real quick because this genie's got to got to head out. He's got to go to Argus in the morning. <laughs> is the genie Will Smith? Because he did play genie. Well, yeah, he did. Yeah, but the next thing you know, you slap a wish out of your hand. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> wish, I wish for you to be happy, bro. I wish I'll you wish. wouldn't. I wish you would. You gotta find a new wife. Well, no, we're not wishing for Will Smith. Your wishes. But your wish. Don't, it, I see how I deflected. See how I did that. Yeah, I did. I saw that. But yeah, you still. Yeah. You, you still gonna get out of this answer. So you're gonna fucking think of three. I, I didn't. I don't, I don't ever really think. I don't ever think. Questions. I don't ever think. Uh, what are three things you'd love to have that you'd never want to pay for? A house in Southwest Florida. You can watch the uh, the sunset all the time. That'd be one. There you go. I would love to have, uh, I mean, obviously, to cure cancer. I thought you were going to go with herpes, man. 
<laughs> I go, I mean, I... Obviously, cure herpes because the head of my penis is getting rough. It's uh... <laughs> thank God I don't have to worry about herpes. Uh, in third, I mean, just in world hungry. How about that? How about just make it, make it nice. Put a nice little bow tie on it. That's oh, nice. I feel like you're lying a little bit about yeah, it. I, I feel like I feel like what you said about world hunger. What you whispered is Bugatti. I saw Bugatti. your mouth. Yeah, I said something. About, just and also the oil changes. You got because you can't just get a Bugatti. You got to make sure. Yeah, you got to also Genie, Genie, Genie. Don't leave. I need the uh, the maintenance agreement. Can you give me like a ten year? You got you got you got to ship this thing on a fucking trolley boat back to Europe, wherever it's at. Mm-hmm. Just uh, you hope in a month it comes back with who makes Bugatti? Is that? I think Boo Gotti. Boo Gotti, uh, like yeah. Yo Gotti, like yeah. Yo Gotti. You ever it's listen a, to Yo Gotti? I, I do. A young Gotti. Uh, no, 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 Yo Gotti. No, Yo is not there. He he retired. He's uh, <laughs> Yo Yo. Have you ever listened to Yo Gotti? Yes, he's selling all of it. I love how they say "street." It's not street. It's "street." That's oh. my favorite. I mean, you can't be skirting street, down the street. Like the sc- you know, <laughs> street <laughs> Swiffer. <laughs> You know, I just learned. I just learned not too long ago that street sweeper actually meant like bullets down, like no street sweeper is an automatic weapon. That you yeah, can yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 was, I like. I need. I need you to be a little more black. I need I, you to. I need you to tap in, tap in. Because listen, at this age, you should know. Uh, Nelly, street sweeper, like <laughs> like two thousand. I was like. Huh. They're singing. They're they're rapping about the the thing that goes. You down. thought they hold on. You thought they were just cleaning the streets. <laughs> <laughs> you thought every hood had a great cleaning uh, system. I mean, you know Buffalo. what? I tell you what. Compton has doing really good with their street sweepers. Every song has one. Every every oh, boulevard. Oh man. Uh, well, shit, man. Hey, man. This this is this has been a gem. Um, is there anything at the end of this thing that you'd like to say? I love my wife. I love my kids. And thank you for letting me uh, have this opportunity to do this. And thank you, Kyle. I appreciate hey, man, it. I appreciate it's that, man. I appreciate you time. here, man. Appreciate yeah. you here, man. Oh, you know what? Um, before we go, I do got to, you know, um, you ready? You re- re- together. Craig, Craig Zion. Zion. I don't even know you, but Craig Zion. Craig Zion. We might have said it earlier, but I always made a, we made a rule to do that. We didn't. We had some fun, had some balls. Uh, had some balls. I mean, you had some balls. First off, that was that was a gentleman next door. I didn't have. Steve, I just, his name was, was Steven. Yeah, his name know. is Steven. <laughs> Look, you lose paper out anybody, too many times. Anybody the name is Steven. He put a You're P gonna... in there too. Yeah, I'm like, it's not Stist. I know what's going he on. He put here. the P. He put the <laughs> P in the V. <laughs> he put the P where the V should be. Ah, oh, Jesus is why. Well, uh, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed church tonight. <laughs> I hope you're able to sleep. Uh, well, hey, thank this, you but again. Seriously, but seriously, thank you for the opportunity. I, I hope I haven't bored everybody to death. And oh, yeah. uh, it's just wonderful what you're doing here. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate that, man. It yeah, means absolutely. a lot. It means a lot, man. Uh, thank you for listening in. And uh, remember, you can't always put it in, but you can always take it out. KQ Show. <laughs>